Welcome to the Xbox Uncut Weekly Podcast, episode 141. I'm Vernon, and today I'll be your host. Today is going to be an awesome show because we have a very special guest. Derek Bradley of Aurora 44 Games is with us today. But first, let's introduce the members of the show. Dustin. Oh, thank you, Vern, for introducing me. <laughs> yeah, this you got to go first since you're usually host. So, yeah. uh, We also have Tim Dog. What's up, guys? Proud to be here. And Steve Rules of steverules.com. Uh, thank you for not forgetting to uh, uh, introduce me like you did on the tweet out. For the yeah, show. that's only on Twitter. So, All right. I love you here. But uh, normally we do longer introductions, but I'd like to introduce our guest for today. For anyone who watched Microsoft's E3 2015 conference, you may be familiar with the game Ashen. Uh, today we have the CEO of Aurora 44 and game director of Ashen, Derek Bradley. Welcome to the show, Derek. Hey, how do you do? I'm great. Thank you so much for uh, being on the show today. I'd like to start oh, yeah, off Yeah, my pleasure. Um, so first off, I'd like to ask a little bit about your background. Um, what got you started in video games and design in particular? Okay. Um, that's an interesting one, actually. When I was, um, I remember being in high school, I think, and um, a little thing called Lord of the Rings was happening in New Zealand. <laughs> um, and I remember seeing there was this, um, there's this big quarry down the road, which they were using to film, um, they were using it to film uh, the Helm's Deep battle, actually. And I remember seeing, um, yeah, you, you kind of just drive past this place and see uh, these lights kind of in, in, in the mountains there. And uh, uh, I kind of imagine what they were doing, I guess. It was one of those things where little old New Zealand, you wouldn't necessarily expect happening and i'd say as a teenager um it had a, an effect on me that it made you sort of believe you could do this kind of thing um that you could actually make a game that you could actually work in games or movies or anything like that um, and actually i was a gamer too so uh I've, i'd always uh, gravitated to uh, games but i originally studied more thinking about film actually but when i got out of uh, university i managed to land a job in games immediately and that's yeah, was kind of how I got started. So, well, how did you get into actual uh, game development, though? What was the first uh, companies you worked for, or like, how did you get to starting Aurora Forty Four? Because I'm sure you had to go through a bit before you ended up starting your own independent studio there. Oh yeah, absolutely. It was um, quite a, uh, a, a large undertaking, I guess you could say. Um, so, I, I originally worked for a company. They were called Sheep back at the time. Uh, they're called Pickpock now. They make um, a lot of iPhone games and things like that now. Um, at the time, I was working on a rugby game. And um, so I started off there. I uh, worked there for a bit. Um, then I worked at uh, Weta Digital, uh, working on you know, uh, The Hobbit and Atheus and a whole bunch of other movies. Um, but interestingly, the guys that I sat right next to and that sat right behind me uh, were the two guys that um, I started my first day working at HD or Pickpock. Um, was uh, the two guys that I started at 44 with. And later on, when I worked at Weta, um, on my same, on the, the first day I started up um, at Weta Digital, um, one of the guys that I started the company with, who is, uh, he, he was in the same as me. We weren't even in the same department, but um, just, I guess, ser serendipitously, he happened to be right there. So it was kind of a lot of things lining up that um, led to being able to, uh, have the talented people around you, I guess, to to uh, be able to start a company. Um, but at the same time, um, yeah, we, you know, obviously my own drive also um, <laughs> prompted me to try and do it. And um, so we got together and we uh, started talking about what kind of game we could make because we'd all worked in games, we'd all um, then worked in film. Um, and I suppose working on big productions like what Weta Digital and things like that do, um, it kind of, I guess, it, it gives you a little bit of an insight into what you could possibly achieve um, at the at the the biggest sort of productions you can imagine, and what would and what that would sort of entail. So we weren't sort of, uh, I guess you could say, we weren't too scared about it. Uh, kind of just went for it and decided that we're gonna get together. We're gonna kind of outline the, the perfect game for us, the thing that we think is sort of missing from what we could possibly play, uh, or at least what we'd want to personally see more of. And uh, we kind of took it from there. Yeah. And you got some kind of a grant or something? I think I saw a news article about that, right? 
Uh, sorry, what was that? I just I just missed the beginning of that. Okay, well, you, you got some kind of grant from New Zealand for your company or something like that? I thought I had read a news article like that somewhere. Uh, no, we didn't, actually. Um, oh, okay. So th- I, I could tell you a little bit about the way that we've been uh, sort of funded and the, the, the way it sort of it, it lined up for us because uh, we really started off as a very grassroots operation. There were only okay. three of us at the start. Um, and, you know, for anybody wanting to get into games, you can certainly start off that way, um, even making something big, open world, ambitious, multiplayer, all the kind of tick boxes that they say not to do. We've certainly uh-huh. gone for it. <laughs> um, and... Uh, so we, as I say, yeah, we, we started off as three people. We basically quit our jobs and, uh, just <laughs> went for it. And, uh, very quickly we moved up to a team of, uh, five or so. Um, but you know, that was within the next six months. But what originally happened was, um, we put out a GIF, um, on Twitter, which I think is possibly, I'll just quickly check just to make sure I'm not lying to you. Uh, I think it is still our, yeah, it's the, the, the tweet that's, pinned right to the top of our of our Twitter page. So okay. uh, we put that tweet out, right? And um, we were even a bit hesitant about it. We weren't necessarily ready for it, um, uh, showing the world the game yet. But we did it anyway, and uh, it happened to get onto something that was happening at the time called Screenshot Saturday. It still does sort of happen, but um, I remember people used to kind of feature it around a bit more than it does, uh, than happens now. But I guess it's a ever-evolving beast, uh, the games industry. So... Uh, we got onto that, and um, we happened to get like a, a few of the news outlets kind of picked it up, and uh, so the guys at ID at Xbox um, contacted us because they saw that. Uh. So um, very interestingly, yeah, and th- that was sort of how we um, got to expand our team in that we um, signed a uh, agreement with Microsoft to uh, be Xbox exclusive on consoles. So right. So you're still publishing yourself though, right? Through ID at Xbox is how it's working. Yeah, yeah, that's a, so that's how it's working. But, I mean, essentially, um, yeah, ID at Xbox have given us what we needed to be able to, um, you know, take it from being uh, three guys making the game to being a team of ten at the moment, you know, which is uh, kind of what we needed. All right. And so we've all seen the trailer, but um, what was your basic pitch for this game once uh, Microsoft contacted you? The basic pitch was that... Um, we wanted to make a game where you didn't necessarily have to be uh, too technically minded to play it, or at least, I guess that's not even the thing, because, I mean, obviously having worked in games and uh, having programmers on the team, we've got technically minded people. I guess you could say we didn't want to have all the technical barriers in place when you're matching up in multiplayer and all those kinds of things, so we wanted people to just run past you and, and you're, you're connected up, you can play for a bit, right. and then you can... Um, kind of move through the world together and uh, collect people and uh, form a town, basically, with the people that you happen to find out in the wilderness. Um, so that was effectively our our, our uh, pitch to Microsoft at the time, I believe. It's so long ago now. Uh, I'm trying to think what else we would have exactly said to them. Um, yeah. So how exactly yeah. do they... How exactly do these people, other people you encounter, work into your game? Do they stay in your game in some way? Yeah, so it, it's a it's a bit of a different system in that um, it's multiplayer, but it's very much linked to your personal progression throughout the game. So uh, you meet people out in the world; uh, they'll just connect to you by chance. Um, it's something you've got to, and the, the, we, we kind of wanted to keep that sense of it being in the moment. Like you might never see this person again if you happen to run in the other direction and disconnect. Similar to what would happen in the real world, in that you might have met your future wife somewhere, but you happen to just walk in a different direction, you know? And so it doesn't uh-huh. it, it doesn't eventuate that way. So the same thing with our NPCs could sort of happen um, in that you can meet someone out in the world. Um, they could just die while you're trying to achieve something together. And so you have to achieve something significant with someone. You have to find a secret, defeat a boss, um, you know, uh, discover a new land together, and then you'll be able to invite them to your town. Or you could actually just uh-huh. walk them back to your back to your town if you actually wanted to do it that way just um, a quick question off that then is it possible to um like if i don't turn left at that road will actions happen with me never going down that road and miss stuff in the same vein or do i have to approach them for that cycle to happen where we walked away not necessarily uh th- th- there are instances in the game where that will happen and we're, we're trying to put branching paths in on purpose where I guess you could say, say there's, um, if you turned left, you would have um, encountered a beast that you could have killed, right? Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't turn left, 
uh, and you turn right instead, you might find that that beast's gone back to your town and killed somebody. So, I guess you could say if you if you turned left, you would have got some content. But if you don't turn left equally, you would also get some content, which um, you know might be good, might be bad. It's more about I, I suppose I'm um, trying to make the most believable world we possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, and and is it an open world? Yeah, it's an open world. It, okay. It's an open world, so so you can go wherever you like, really. Um, we certainly have dungeons and things like that, which are a little bit more confined on purpose to give you a little bit more of a claustrophobic feel or a, a little bit of a variation um, from the the big open world. But yeah, it certainly is an open world. But it is it so, is it somewhat linear in the way you'll get a quest and go and do something and then get the next quest, or can you kind of go anywhere and it scales to you, say like in a Elder Scrolls game or? Mm-hmm. Um, it's interesting. We've actually tried to put tough things all over the place, things that are actually too hard for you, almost, that you Ooh, could right. run into yeah. um, on purpose. And that's particularly because when you meet somebody out in the world, we want it to feel like you needed them. It's, it's not kind of like I'm just beating these creeps up and nothing's going to stop me and I'm kind of just moving through the world. We want to make sure there's these barriers out there that you can only really get past if you happen to be lucky enough to find somebody else. So there's some value to that. Um, and then when you do achieve it, um, you actually disconnect when you uh, join each other's towns because your towns are in the exact same spot, technically speaking. Right. Um, and that's why I say that the towns are actually part of um, your personal progression, which is very much linked to multiplayer. Once you've invited somebody to your town, they uh, become a townsperson in your town. They give you access to uh, character development, so perks that you can get and things like that, um, as well as they might craft something for you. They might give you information. But you've essentially found that person out in the world in multiplayer. They've come back to your town and now you're completely disconnected and they become more of a accounting for your progression through the world. The more townsfolk you have, the more successful you are in the game, the, the stronger you are, technically could speaking. They, could they say turn into an NPC that, NPC that could sell you something in town even? Or do they Absolutely. not function like that? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so they, could, they can turn into NPCs. They could sell you things. Um, they can even, on occasion, they might be, there might be some NPCs that you shouldn't really trust. They might be a little bit shifty, you know? <laughs> um, right. So uh, we, we're really trying to get that... Um, sense of a story and, and, and something that people can believe in um, is, is, is always in the forefront of our minds, yeah. <clears throat> so is that stuff randomly generated? Like when someone becomes part of your town, part of your town will you then assign a, a certain type of character for that person? Yeah, well, uh, I, I guess this is getting quite deep into the, into the guts of the system, really. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> what, what, what we're actually doing is um, when you meet somebody out in the world, they won't necessarily look like themselves. They'll look like an NPC, and you'll look like an NPC to them. So the NPC will already have been designated. And right. what's interesting about that, I mean, obviously there's a choice there, um, whether you're going to let people express themselves out in the world and show you what they look like, or do you want to really art direct the town and make sure that there's a lot of character to the people that you're picking up and the the look of your town so that we can... Um, coordinate that this guy who looks like a blacksmith when you get him back to your right. town he's going to have an actual smith and he's going to like everything will kind of line up and um look aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing so it's um yeah and, and i suppose that that's sort of where we have struck the balance which has given us yeah some some quite interesting really stuff. cool so now, i'm sorry no I, I have a question um uh, the multiplayer portion does it, it, it does it essentially kick in when you're in the vicinity of another player in that world? Is that when it it starts to connect? I, th- I think I read that somewhere where if you come close to another player that's on the multiplayer, it connects you guys. Is is that correct? Yeah, effectively, our matchmaking server would be screening for uh, proximity, so it would make sure that yeah, it, it will always be matching you up with, with, with somebody who's near you and um, in level. In in, in level two, um, you know, we, we we reckon it actually more by gameplay progression than level mm-hmm. um, in in a lot of ways, um, or at least both. You know, uh, to to make sure that um, the worlds are aligned as much as possible, that you've got um, stuff to do together. So does it not have traditional leveling then? Uh, it doesn't really have traditional uh-huh. leveling as such. Yeah. Um, we've actually pushed way, t- way further um, in terms of perks that you can put I on see. your character th- and, and perks that will change them more dramatically and have a bit more story to them again. Oh. Yeah. Okay, so it'll, it'll say, you know, you've completed so many quests and have this many perks and that's how you match them with someone who's at a similar progression point in the game, yeah. essentially. Yeah, okay. 
And 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 communication is is that pro- is there proximity chat in this game or is it uh, something that you would typically uh, meet up beforehand on the person and be in a party chat? Is there any kind of proximity chat or no? Uh, not so much actually. Um, on purpose, we've um, gone for hand gestures and things like that. And it's okay. It, 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 again, it's like a, it's sort of one of those choices. And because I mean, I, I love proximity chat in, in other games that I play, but um, for this particular one, it's like we, we we're always trying to look at how can we keep things in character. You know, if you if you meet a guy who's a blacksmith, how can we make it that. Um, his voice sounds like a blacksmith or his um, persona seems like a blacksmith still mm-hmm. um, and that you can buy into this world that you're going into. Because I guess, um, you know, uh, depending on what kind of game uh, you're, you're, you're making, um, and in, in our particular game, um, we're going for a bit more of an escapist kind of immersive uh, thing where we wanted to use yeah, hand gestures and, and things right. like that to, to keep each person in character. Yeah, I actually wanted to get into that because... Uh, as far as the art's concerned, none of these characters have faces, so I assume body language end up, ends up becoming a big part of your design design decisions with this game, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I, I guess yeah, that that's where a lot of hand gestures. So you'll be able to like wave at people or point or do things like that to try figure things out. But it also comes down to that that sort of basic human thing where actions speak louder than words in a lot of ways. Uh-huh. So when you're deciding to trust someone. Um, It'll just be a, a, about the, how they sort of carry themselves in the world, uh, what they do. Um, if you see that they're kind of leading you to nice things or they're, you know, holding their shield up so you can, like, walk walk behind them and, and, and be the DPS or, like, you somehow synergize in, in how you actually move together and kind of cutting through the fat and letting the players see that side of things as much as possible. Right. Is there any kind of the Holy Trinity stuff in this game? I mean, can you, say, be a tank type or a damage dealer or is there even healing in the game? Do you get yeah. into any kind of that RPG stuff? Absolutely. Um, you know, you can definitely be a tank. Um, and I, I think our, our sort of um, tanking and stuff like that, it actually extends um, right into the, the, the equipment weight that you have on you. Um, changes what you, you can do with the environment. So um, a lighter mm-hmm. person will be able to run further and faster and all those kinds of things. But a heavier person will actually move through uh, things that would be a wind wall for a light person. A heavy person could kind of slowly push through and get to places that the light person couldn't get to whereas if you're a lighter person you might be able to make a jump over a ravine or something because there's a wind at your back that will actually push you further so we've got sort of wind forces that also even um, kind of I guess um, add a little bit of texture to that whole um, dynamic of whether you're going to be tanky whether you're going to be lighter DPS um, sort of builds Um, as far as healing and stuff like that, we're going for a bit more of a, a generalized approach. So mm-hmm. it's kind of more uh, like uh, trappings that a woodsman might be able to pick up, like, like little things that you would learn about how to he- how to heal so yourself out in the world. More low fantasy. Yeah, absolutely. More more yeah. low fantasy. I mean, uh huh. It, it's kind of that 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 sort of ninety ten rule where you know you do ninety percent of stuff, which is quite low fantasy and quite down to earth. So that ten percent, when you do see it, really blows you away. Yeah, like uh, like Conan, <laughs> if you're into those stories. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think that's uh, uh, where Lost Fantasy might have started, even. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also want to ask, is there much as far as character customization is concerned, as far as weapons, armor, loot, or is this not really too loot-driven at all? Uh, yeah, there certainly are weapons. Uh, weapons are also one of the biggest ways that you technically level up your, your player in, in a lot of ways, in that, um, you, that there's a well, we call him an Ash Smith because it's Ash and, and he's working with Ash, but he effectively um, uh, upgrades your weapons and, and um, bolsters your, your ability to um, damage things. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you can find a whole variety of weapons. You can upgrade them um, and certainly armor sets too because, yeah, depending on which armor set you've got on, you'll be a tank, you'll be uh, a lighter sort of DPS person, yeah. Mm-hmm. And what's the what's the basic gameplay like as far as the combat's concerned? What a lot of people have looked at this and immediately what comes to mind is uh, the Souls series. Is that what you're going for? Like the basic kind of dodge and counter kind of gameplay yeah. that that has. To, to a large degree, we're we're doing our own take on that, um, but. I, I guess you could say we've, we've got a whole bunch of systems of our own in there too, which kind of add quite a few curveballs. Um, but yeah, essentially we're we're going for that kind of dodge um, block, uh, yeah, uh, mechanic. Kind of ver- yeah, 
and, and very precise hitboxes and things like that. So, you know, when, when your sword passes through someone's arm, it's actually going to hit them, you know. Um, mm. So, yeah, all, I'd, I'd say all that, that, that sort of stuff for sure. And is this going to be hard or <laughs> is That's this something <laughs> casuals can enjoy? Because I know a lot of people will pick up a Souls game and just throw the controller down immediately. <laughs> so I'm just yeah. curious. And I'll, I'll you know, I, I think there's a very fine balance to be struck there. Um, uh-huh. I think... The, the best way I could describe it is, you know, one of the things that people imagine about Dark Souls, I don't know if you've seen the gif of, like, the guy uh, walking along a very thin pathway and then the skeleton just kind of kicking him off a cliff from mm-hmm. out of nowhere, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, so, so there's that sort of stuff in Dark Souls, which we're not necessarily going for that side of right. it. Um, but in terms of the combat being quite tough, um, we are doing some of that simply because... We want to encourage people to get into multiplayer. And, and when you right. get into multiplayer, it becomes a lot easier. Um, and actually, personally, what I found um, with Dark Souls when I first played it was um, one of the issues I had, and this might just be because of being in New Zealand, was that it was a lot easier for people to invade my world than it was for me to summon a white phantom to help me because the invasions were constantly seeking you in the background. You know, They had to just set it up and it was kind of looking in the background. So I would get invaded a whole lot more than I would... Um, get people helping me whereas we're going full pve in this one our focus is very much to try get people cooperating and having meaningful experiences together which is why we've effectively got um that search in the background always looking for a friend um no matter what so we want to make that more um, much more common that you're going to be able to find people so does it put you in a group with other players can, I, can you see their health things like that or do you just randomly walk up to someone and move with them? Like, is there a way you can stay connected to them and know where they are on the map or where they are in, as far as no, in, in your vicinity and all that? Yeah, not at all. Um, on purpose, they're kind of left very much the same as anything else in the world. Um, you know, you, you, you can tell that they're friendly, but um, aside from that, we've tried to keep them quite low-key. Um, and you, you can only connect to one other person at a time. So, um, Okay. Yeah, right. and, and the, the the reason for one other person at a time, again, it's not really a technical limitation. It's simply because uh, a different sort of uh, social thing happens when it's a one-on-one experience as, mm-hmm. as opposed to when you start to get three people, four people. You know, as soon as you have three, you might have uh, two people kind of synergize and another guy feel left out. Uh, we kind of always wanted people to have to deal with each other and figure out whether they connect or not. Will you be able to see their gamer tag or is it supposed to just be... Completely anonymous. No, yes, yeah. it was, it was meant to be completely anonymous. I think um, the uh, we we did have ideas of you know showing the the gamer tags of the people that have helped you in the end, or maybe once they join your village, you can figure out their gamer tags or things like that um, uh, through 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 some sort of menu or something like that. So we're not really against showing it, but it's more just trying to keep the game as immersive as we possibly can, and to yeah. To, to, to keep you believing in those NPCs, make them uh-huh. sort of a part of your world. And is this game um, story-driven at all? Is there going to be a pretty big story in this? Yeah, absolutely. It's totally story-driven. Um, as I say, we, we do a lot of things to try and make branching paths on many different levels in the game, but um, certainly, yeah, it's a, it's a story-driven game. And I gotta ask you, this the art is so cool in this game. What inspired that? Is is this a part of your drawing, or is this someone you, an artist you worked with, that you really got this design going? Or, well, our uh, art director is Leighton Milne. Uh, he's uh-huh. one of the guys I've worked with for forever. Um, but yeah, we sort of we sort of come up with it over quite a long time. Uh, I think we formed our company at the end of 2013, but I think we'd been talking about action for maybe a year before that and sort of uh doing maybe 25 hours a week or so on action in addition to uh-huh. full-time jobs oh, um, gosh. so wow. uh you, you could say that we uh we've spent a lot of time iterating on it it's almost hard to even put my finger on what we we or at least where we found it um yeah i know games like like journey like um super brothers sword and sorcery mm-hmm. uh, the zelda games uh all that kind of stuff definitely influenced us at the start and were, those were things that we looked to uh for inspiration but mm-hmm. it's come so so far now that it's we, we kind of reference ashen when we're trying to decide on a new ashen thing um <laughs> It, just because we've been working on it for so long, I think, yeah. So how far along is the game now? I mean, uh, can we expect any news on a release date soon or a release window or anything? 
we don't have release dates yet, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, I mean, like it's going really well. Uh, things are pretty much going to plan. Um, but it's just, I guess, it's one of those things where we're big believers in iteration and making sure it's right, so that when we mm-hmm. put it out, I mean, and, and, and this is probably a, a part of our approach of wanting to make a day one game that is uh, a finished product and a whole product. And um, when you, you know, put it in your console, you're going to be able to just play it and it's going to be done sort of thing. So we're trying to come at it from as many angles as we can to make sure it's really battle tested and ready to go. And is this going to be a digital only title? For now, those are the plans, but uh-huh. yeah, we'll have to see. Uh-huh. And I, oh, I want to ask one more thing. How, how, how big is your team now? I know you said you started with three and then went to five. Yeah, we've, we've got a team of ten now. So, wow. yeah, getting up there. Getting Slowly. bigger. It's, it, yeah, it's good. You know, I, I think, um, you know, in, in the past we've sort of flirted with the idea of um, suddenly adding another five people to the team or something like that. But it's just kind of worked out that we've seemed to add sort of a person a month or so. And it, it, it kind of lets the team keep a good culture. And uh, it means that we can kind of give enough attention to the new people that come on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And what were you going to ask him? Uh, no, <clears throat> we were talking about how it's going to be a, a digital title. Um, what are you slated for uh, as far as um, release? Uh, Windows 10 and Xbox One? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we would certainly be on both. And you know, uh, one of the things that's interesting about that um, was uh, that the because because obviously being a multiplayer game and wanting us to uh, be able to connect with as many people as possible and as as uh, as often as possible is the bigger the player pool, the better, really. So if we can get uh, cross-play happening and all that kind of stuff, oh, uh, really? which we That's good. obviously can, which will be excellent, yeah. So would cross-play only be between, say, like a Windows 10 and an Xbox One version? Or if there is a possible Steam release, would it include that too? How's that work? We would try to, but I, I, I believe it would just be between um, Xbox and PC, yeah. Oh, it's, mm-hmm. it, it, Xbox and Windows 10. Um, I don't think that the Steam would be able to do it, but Maybe I'm not not 100 mm-hmm. percent sure. Right. So how is it developing for both environments? Do you feel like it's two separate things, or do you feel like you're making one game that can easily be on you know Windows 10 as a, a UWP and also an Xbox One game? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think it's totally fine actually. The the different environments don't make that much difference to us because um, we're we're using Unreal Engine um, and you know, effectively we do our performance profiling and all that kind of stuff to make sure it works, but um, essentially Unreal makes a very, very smooth uh, product that is, 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 is quite easy to transition between the different places we need to put it in. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds exciting. Um, yeah, so everyone is listening. Make sure to check out Ashen. Looks like it's going to be awesome. <laughs> so uh, I did want to go into some other things since... Uh, we were getting into the stuff about UWPs. So how is it working with those? And what are your feelings on on uh, using that? And like I said, the integration between Xbox One. Do you think it's a, a really great step moving forward? And are, are you... Are, are you are you happy? Guess, are you having any, are you, are, yeah, are you happy with the way yeah. it's going right now? Because I know there's a lot of back and forth on it right now. Yeah, I mean, like it, it certainly seems like a, a work in progress right now in terms of like how things are going to finally shake out. So I'll be interested to see how that all goes. But you know, the the, the bigger player pools, being able being able to have it on multiple places and, and and draw our players from from multiple places is only good for our game in particular. You know, um, so yeah, f- from our perspective, it's been quite good to be honest. And is it something that will be easily that'll be easy to scale? say, from one platform to another? Because um, one of the big stories right now, as we talked about before the show, is that uh, Sony is actually coming out with a... Well, it looks like they're going to be coming out with a new console this year, um, which will play all the old games, but they're going to have to make new versions of the game, of games in the future starting in October that will run better, essentially, on the new console, and they'll still be cross-play with each other and all that. So... Um, if Microsoft did something similar, would that make the transition easier now that you're making it as a UWP? Like, mm-hmm. do you know much about that as far as like how that's going to transfer from, say, like PC to a console or to another console that's in the future? Is that yeah, an easy well, transition? 
Yeah, I, I, like honestly, I think it would be quite easy, but I'm I'm not developing for PlayStation, so I could I couldn't exactly mm-hmm. say what uh, requirements mm-hmm. they might have. Well, but um, for, for for my experience with Xbox has been that it's quite an easy platform to develop for. Uh, we haven't really mm-hmm. had any issues, so um, I can't imagine that having a little bit more horse, horsepower would be detrimental. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But would it be as simple as just transferring that UWP to a, a new piece of hardware, or would there be a lot of optimization after that, or is it something you think that would be difficult? Yeah, well, you know, we're currently balancing our game for PC as well as Xbox One, and, uh-huh. you know, say um, there, there was a 1.5 uh, that came out, um, I can't see it being very difficult to go from uh, lower specs to higher specs. Um, you know, it would just mean that we can add more stuff, uh, which is a, a lot easier than if you've got this really uh, ingrained, like, high-tech stuff that will just not go down to a lower spec. Um, right. That's mm-hmm. very hard, very, very hard to pull out. Um, but as far as um, having a bit more ho- horsepower to, to, to add a bit more frame rate, add, add a bit more resolution to stuff, you know, um, I, I don't really see any issues with that. Mm-hmm. Um. I have a question. Um, it's it's uh, kind of we did talk about it, but I wanted to to ask this question. Uh, the design of um, what I find makes um, Ashen uh, kind of like stand uh, out from other things is the faceless uh, characters. I, I kind of think I like the artwork of it. I think it's um, it, for some for some reason it just it has a unique feel. What was was who was that an overall idea or like was was that a group idea or was there a little um, who came up with that idea and how did you come about that and was there any kind of were you guys a little nervous about it at first when when you're talking about the infancy stages of developing the game um, how did you guys come up with that because I, like I like I said I find that there's some type of it, it has a little appeal to me in in a way um, uh, art style wise. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I can tell you exactly how we came up with that one. So uh, this was while we were still working at Weta Digital, just doing doing stuff in our spare time. Um, and I remember Leighton, our art director, was kind of just going through sculpts uh, of, of what a, a, a generic player character could look like. And he'd done like 10 different sculpts and each face was a different amount of detail and different something else. And then one day he just like took a giant brush and smashed in one of the faces and I looked at it, and, 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 and like he, well, obviously he, he brought it to me. He's like, you know what? I kind of like this, but I'm really just not sure because it's it's obviously just it's something people aren't necessarily prepared for, and it's a bit of a it's a bit of a risk in a way. Mm-hmm, yeah. Um, but yeah, I I also just looked at it and I was like, yep, we're done. This is it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, because that, that, that's what's cool about it. I, I would think in the in the, at the start of this, like you would think that that's a risk. But uh, overall, what I see from now, you know, obviously I'm looking at the the, the uh, gameplay and stuff like that. It, it does have a certain type of um, appeal to it, or it it, it has like a a, a a way about it that that um, seems different, which I like. Yeah, yeah, that seems yeah. To be and, a hit. and it certainly fits with you know us wanting uh, people to express themselves within the game. You know, if if you look like. Um, Nathan Drake, or even if you look like Master Chief, who has hasn't really you can't really see his face, but he's got a lot of character to him. Um, sometimes for some people it might be hard to identify with it or to put themselves in it. So we just try to make the face as blank as possible, so yeah. people can kind of get past that part of it and yeah. experience this look cool. more of the environment and stuff like that. Yeah. So what kind of monsters are going to be fighting in this? Are we talking dragons, or are we talking completely fictitious fictional characters that we haven't seen before? To a large degree, I'd say they're all quite new. Um, uh-huh. You know, uh, we've talked about rats and things like that, but I don't know that we're actually going to do those even. Um, I think that um, most of our creature designs have, uh, yeah, we, we tend to do something a little bit different with everything. But at the same time, when I say different, it's always that uh, that ninety ten kind of thing where yeah. we try to do something that's mostly of our world, but we twist it just enough to make it interesting. Um, just And I guess it's, uh, the way I'd put that is, uh, it's kind of like a painting where you've got this one little point of interest that's got to be hyper-detailed and really interesting, but your eye also needs place to rest, which is why paintings have um, quite um, plain areas in them, particularly landscape paintings. Um, and it's the same thing with our design. It's like we're giving people's minds a place to rest for a lot of the time, and then this like bit of candy immediately which is interesting and has contrast and then you can rest again you know it just gives things mm-hmm. um yeah a, a nice rhythm 
And is this going to be combat heavy at all, or is there a lot of exploration? Are there a lot of puzzles, things like that? Because it, from the trailer, it seemed like there will be some puzzles and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm not sure that the, I, I would consider the puzzles as overt as what you'd find in uh, like Zelda games and things like that. Right. But, um, th- th- there's certainly um, different ways to do everything. We're, we always try to make um, a way to use kind of travel and knowledge of the land. Um, to be able to achieve the same goals as just brute forcing and fighting everything. So, um, mm-hmm. and someone who's good at travel will naturally discover things that someone who's good at combat wouldn't. Well, and and, and, al- and also, and also, like you said, um, if you're not carrying as much equipment on you, you're lighter and can maybe use the wind to make a longer jump. Could that person then help the other person who's behind in some way, or is, is that implemented into the game at all? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, like the the, the simplest form of that. I mean, th- this isn't even. Um, as complex as what you described, but I mean, you can see in the trailer, there's um, that door that they open together, and you effectively have to have two people to open that door. Mm-hmm. Um, so we've 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 extrapolated that right out so that two people can yeah um, assist each other in a whole bunch of ways that are interesting and and kind of build that bond between you. Yeah. Mhm. Well, awesome. Yeah, and I'm, I'm, I know we're all excited about this game. It looks like it's really going to fill. A particular hole in the Xbox library um, because they don't have an exclusive game that's anything like this, honestly. Right. Um, so, yeah, this is really exciting. Um, and I mean, obviously, you're a gamer if you're making games. So I have to ask you, like, what what games are you playing? What kind of games like really inspire you as a game designer? Oh, you know, um, right. Well, I've I, I've I've played a lot of Dota. I. <laughs> yeah, a bunch of, of League of Legends at the moment, and as a designer, those are really interesting just because of the sheer variety of abilities, and um, particularly the guys at Riot seem to bring out a new uh, champion every couple of months or something with like absolutely different um, abilities and stuff like that. So uh, I think that one's really exciting from a design perspective, to be honest. Uh-huh. Um, just the yeah, I, I'm always amazed at how they can come up with something new after having like a hundred plus. Uh, champions in the pool already. There's like some mm-hmm. new dynamic that they can pull out. Um, would be a really interesting one for me. Yeah. Anything current you're playing, or have you just uh, been so busy? Well, I I just picked up Dark Souls three because you <laughs> pretty much have to. Um, uh-huh. So yeah, I'm I'm playing that on uh, on PC at the moment. Uh-huh. Uh, and yeah, very exciting. I I need to find more time for it really <laughs> in between yeah. work. But um, yeah, that's always good. Uh huh. And since we're talking about that, I mean, we have a very important question for you. Uh, SNES yeah. or Genesis? I'd have to go for SNES just because I haven't played that much Genesis. Yeah. So. Dustin rejoices, I frown. Yes. Oh. <laughs> the SNES has been on a victory streak. <laughs> just guess. I'm so happy. It really has. I'm the, I'm the odd one out here. Yes. It's hard to be a Sega fan. Oh, I, I would, I would pick. Uh, oh, where's the the Mega Drive over here? Over there. Oh, that's the right. SNES, Sonic for Life, and the music to SNES kills everything. I'm sorry. It's just it was a thing of beauty. They had amazing soundtracks. Just go listen to Don, Donkey Kong Country. It was just amazing. You said Sonic for Life. I can't be Sonic for Life. I can only be Sonic till the end of the nineties, personally. Yeah, no, that's that's a, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a fact. I, mean. I, I kind of assume that there was nothing after that. Yeah, they just, you know, like after just Sonic Adventure and... Two, it just doesn't exist. It's over. But like uh, Crash Bandicoot, you know, after the sort of Naughty Dog games and perhaps the first Vivendi one after that, it's kind of you know he's been in retirement. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, a final question. This is a really important one. This it gets heated. Halo or Gears? Oh, that that is a tough one. Um, I'm gonna go for Halo just because of Halo One, the first one. You know, I, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for Halo because of that. <laughs> oh my! I'm not. It, it, it becomes a little bit harder for me now, but yeah. Oh, uh, you have you have you not played much Halo since the first one since CE? I've I haven't actually well at, le- at least the, the the most recent I haven't played much I've I played a lot of the first one though so it's enough mm-hmm. to make up for it let's say oh yeah did you do the land parties yeah oh yeah have you tried the new gears beta out of curiosity I have not I would be interested to but uh, yeah no I have not have you been playing that I know everybody except for me 
yeah. I'm, I'm more of a, I, I hate to say, it, I've, I've put probably about 40 hours into Minecraft this last, like, two weeks. Okay. Because it's Minecraft, and I'm addicted, uh, personally. Like, it's my... Yeah. See, I'm the I'm the big Gears fan here, so I've been, you know, I've, I've been putting a lot of time into it, and it's uh, oh. it's it's good. It's a uh, it's a good start. Obviously, you know, better it's not perfect, but I like I like the feel of it. The maps are good. <laughs> you know, uh, obviously that you know, I kind of said it, it's a beta, but it's like an alpha build. So, mm-hmm. you know, I'll forgive them on some things like the audio, but I'm very encouraged by the the sort of start that they've made and. And hoping to see more soon. Yeah, I suppose if you're a big fan, you would you'd, you'd be quite clued in on exactly what the iterations they've made or the slight changes from the previous games. Um, yeah, how, how it's you, sort of evolved. I mean, it, it feels very. Much, I mean, they've clearly sort of taken Gears Three and built from out, and the things they've changed, like the, the sort of close combat quarters, things where you can sort of grab people and use the knife. Um, I, I like those changes because um, I think it you know stops people sort of sitting across from like the same cover and blind firing and but then there's also that thing where you know if you're grabbing someone someone can sort of walk up behind you and just sort of shotgun you and save yeah. their teammates so that kind of trade-offs is always there which i like and the yeah. the new weapon the, the drop shot um <laughs> i like a lot okay um so that's yeah it's, it's certainly a good start you yeah, piqued my interest yeah, well, it's pretty impressive too how well it's running right now. I mean, it's they're calling it an alpha right now, even even though it's t- they're selling it, not selling it, but even though they're saying it's a beta, uh, they actually were considering just calling it an alpha anyway because uh, right. I mean, it's obviously got a long <laughs> way to go still. It's about six months out, but they had it at they got it running at 1080p, close to 60 frames per second. They, they're doing a good job, and I'm sure it'll get better and better looking. It should be really impressive. Nice. Yeah, you should go beg. Uh, Rod uh, Ferguson for a code. Yeah, that's what I would do. <laughs> <laughs> um, your, buddy, your buddies with Microsoft, they'll probably give you a code, right? It's true, it probably can't be arranged. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, how uh, with Ashton, are, are you guys, I think you touched on this, um, do you have a specific timeline or, or is it just maybe basically something where... Um, when it's finished, it's finished, and you know you're gonna find a, a a good spot to to release the game. And and a two part question: What are your what are your goals? Uh, what what would you like to see? How what would make you happy uh, as developing the game? What what like what is the goal for for or you know the goal for the game basically? Yeah, it's it's interesting. I think for us, and I mean for, for me as a designer, I, I'll answer the first one first. I guess <laughs> is that um, I mean, so so the second one first is that um, my goal is really just to make something that I'm proud of, to be honest. And I I, I truly believe that if you're going to try to do something a little bit different, uh, a little bit uh, where you have to stick your neck out a little bit and try a, a few things that might work, might not work, um, and you really have to test it and make sure it's good. Um, yeah, for me personally, it would just be that when we do put it out and when people can play it, that they get it, you know, and that they and, and, and that they enjoy it would be the the most important thing. So, yeah, uh, you know, you, you never know which way these things eventuate. If we have a very like a small, really passionate group of people who love it, I'd be totally happy with that because that's kind of why we're making it. Um, and yeah, anything more than that's kind of the icing on the top. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I mean, as far as development, that probably reflects our development too. In that, um, we're, we're we're trying a whole lot of new things, so it's very hard to um, call exactly what our timeline is. Right. But um, essentially, it's just about making it good, making sure it's ready. Cool. Oh no, you've totally sold me on this game, though. Like I, I was kind of like I don't know. I didn't really follow the game all that much, but just. Oh, I can't now. Like this is all I'm gonna. This is like my top game coming this, out. I'm really I'm excited to play this. Yeah, I like the idea. And th- I really love the idea of not like joining multiplayer, or having somebody come up and just not knowing who they are. Like that is fantastic. Like the idea behind like, that. It's kind of like in the division doing jumping jacks to get someone yeah. to play with yeah. you, right? Well, no. <laughs> well, I think well, this is more detailed than that. Or, de- like, or dancing well, in Destiny, you know? Because this like... really it, it, it forces people to like show who they are without like you can't yell at somebody yeah. or you can't. Mm. You Can know. you use the environment to hurt someone you're playing with? 
I think technically you could. You could probably like aggro some <laughs> horrible thing and then like pull it pull it onto them. Um, I'm just curious. <laughs> if, is this going to be like trolling. the division? Can I walk in front of a door and stop them from walking out? <laughs> no, no, yeah, that, that is one of the things. Because like you know, we, I think a lot of games have found really as soon as you put like anything players can do to each other, they will do it to each other. Right. <laughs> We've got to, um, we, we sort of try cater it to to yeah. Tr Try keep things moving, I guess uh, you could say. Yeah. And so I wonder our, our, if me and Vern accidentally map if I could like push him off a cliff or something. I mean, <laughs> or set up a would... trap. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or is there no cliff? Yeah, no, no. <laughs> yeah, oh, th 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 there certainly are cliffs you can fall down, but you can't really push each other down. It. No, <laughs> I, I think the worst things you could do is probably like aggro an enemy that they didn't want aggroed, or and then you just kind leave. of leave them. In yeah, yeah, exactly. You could just lead them in too deep somewhere, you know, in some deep, deep dark forest, and then run around a corner and be gone. Yeah, they call it they call it PVE griefing in MMOs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Uh, well, I I know Phil's looking forward to to Ashen because um, I had made uh, me and my friend uh, Fernando. We kind of uh, sometimes make these things. We made an infograph of upcoming games. And we had the box art of, uh, or, you know, a, an idea of box art for games that aren't released. And we were, like, basically listing, listing them. And I showed Phil. And he goes, I like it, but you're, you're, you're missing a couple of uh, games that I want. And he mentions your name. So I know uh, Phil, Phil is looking forward to your game. Oh, yeah, and you got the stage like, like talking to him. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Cool. Um, Phil is very cool. He's such a passionate um, person about games that, yeah, always, always good talking to him. And uh, what kind of support is Microsoft giving you? Like, are, are, is there are anyone from Microsoft Studios who's actually working with your team or anything like that? Yeah, uh, Nate and Chris from the ID at Xbox team are great supporters of the cause, um, and they've uh, been working with us for a long time now. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, they obviously we've got an uh, exclusivity agreement with them that we're coming to yeah. Xbox um, but in general they're, they're always very keen to, to talk to us to figure out what we need um, they're always uh, very happy to offer publicity and all that kind of stuff um, mm -hmm. if anything we're the, 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 the more sheepish ones that we, we want to like be able to really show something big and amazing so mm -hmm. uh, if, if anything we, 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 we sort of hold off a little bit but um, yeah the I mean, like, and, and, and I guess you guys must have uh, picked this up from uh, kind of following what they do for a while, but the ID at Xbox team are just such a passionate group of people, an yeah. amazing team mm -hmm. to work with, really. Um, they just absolutely love games. They all play yeah. games all the time. Uh, Chris. So, yeah. yeah. Chris is great. Chris Charla, he's a, he's a really, I, I met him at E3, uh, mm -hmm. talking about a passionate guy. He's, uh, he's really done well, I think, with the ID at Xbox program. Yeah. Yeah, they, they they certainly seem to have um, found that sort of uh, really just I, I don't know how they've done it, but within such a big organization, they've managed to gather to them such a uh, a great group of people that are really um, do everything they can within the organization to push new interesting content, uh, which is quite amazing. Yeah. And can we expect any new gameplay or a trailer sometime soon? Will you, will you will you be? I'm I'm not saying will you be on stage at E3. I'm not gonna just, make you answer that. But <laughs> <laughs> will you guys be at E3 to show the game? I'm not sure or yet. Can, you know, we, yeah, we we sort of haven't made plans. Um, my my uh, my focus has really been uh, sort of heads down trying to make uh, development happen. But that's something we'll uh, be looking right. at soon. Well, yeah. that, actually, I have a question in regards to that. It, it, you know, it, it does to go to E3 and to do and to 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 create a trailer. That all d definitely definitely cuts into development time. Is that is that fair to say? Because uh, I, I know like a game like Recore, and everyone's like, well, they didn't show it and they didn't show it last year. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> to stop and make a a, a a trailer and go to E3. That def w w would it be fair to say that that has an, an effect on uh, does it, uh, on development? It, it slows it down, obviously, um, instead of just going head straight ahead and just keep developing. Yeah, Is exactly. And, and and I mean, particularly on a, on a team of our size, I mean, um, we're on, on the smaller end of the scale that um, if a couple of us go over to E3, we're losing sort of 20% of our team, you know? Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. as, as well as working on a trailer, um, it, it, it certainly does um, take its toll, but you know the the benefits you get from it if you do it at the right time in the right way is is, is really good. But 
at the same time, almost when you don't see something at E3, it kind of might mean that you're going to get the game sooner, which right. is yeah, uh, yeah. May- maybe a good thing. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we got a question from chat. Um, is this the Ow. kind of game you would ever consider for game preview? Uh, we, we have thought about it, you know, um, uh-huh. and, and I certainly... I'm not really against game preview. I think that uh-huh. it's it's really good for certain types of games, but I think for this one, our fo- focus has certainly been to just have that kind of day one experience where right. you can load up the game, uh, play the game, and it's kind of perfect. Um, I've had uh, really conflicting experiences where um, when I've played some games in beta or in early access sort of programs, and um, some of them I've loved that, and others it's kind of ruined the game for me. And so... Right. I, I think it's a tricky one, and I think in this particular case, because we're trying to orchestrate so much stuff and so much story, um, that we would rather probably just release it when it's ready. Yeah, right. Make sure yeah, that makes of, sense. That yeah. makes sense. Uh, I had a, a question, if well, more of a, something to talk about. So I noticed the, I mean, the art styles are very interesting, but also like to do with the light, and there's no sun. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, it's all to do with the ash. I wondered if you could sort of talk about that and how you sort of came up with that idea, because obviously that's in the name, Ashen. Um. Yeah, sure. Um, so this is a, a, a world where, uh, as far as you know, or as long as people can remember, there's been no natural light whatsoever. Um, people have effectively had to live by, by candlelight, um, and slowly they've been dying out. Um, mm. That's not necessarily the truth, though. Uh, the truth is that there was light, but there's no sun. Uh, the light sort of was produced by this ash, which kind of erupts out of the ground. Uh, but it was maybe like thousands of years ago, uh, so long ago that you know it's passed from being uh, recorded history to so- societies kind of plummeting into darkness to uh, being oral history to being something that's maybe slightly known through you know folklore or slightly you, you know you, you might see like hints of it um, in old ruins but it wouldn't really be something you'd believe in um, and the start of the game is when this ash sort of comes back into the world and you're trying to figure out why um, and interestingly this is sort of also what makes it um, a low fantasy game in that uh, we, we, we chose one specific element we wanted to twist the world with and this is it it's the um, the, the ash, which has these luminescent kind of properties to it, it has a special energy to it. Um, but we kind of ground ourselves by making sure that everything else in the world is, behaves quite a lot like our world does. Um, it's just figuring out how this ash has twisted things, how it, how it's changed things and made the world a bit different. Yeah. Oh, no, that's uh, I mean it's interesting because the you know obviously as I mentioned to do with the name and, and the aesthetics, so that's. A, quite a sort of cool thing that's perhaps a bit different so that, that was something I, I noticed and liked about it the way that it looks so yeah, and as you. far as the mood's concerned are you going for a bit of a horror vibe with this game uh we certainly do have moments like that um uh-huh. i would say yeah our, our, our vibe is uh quite a subdued uh sort of like like a darker more twilight kind of vibe um uh-huh. not not twilight the movie just 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 right. twilight the time of day um but, uh, and, and yes, yeah, certainly when you get down into dungeons and stuff like that, we've got enemies that will purposely, like, keep out of your light or your lantern range. They'll stalk you in the darkness, do stuff like that. And we've referenced movies like the first Alien movie um, was a good one for just how you can kind of hide things and make them quite creepy. Um, and uh, so, yeah, we, we've certainly got a bit of horror but um, and, and, and a bit of darkness in there, but... Uh, it's it's all kind of a, a, a balance because we've got the opposite end of the spectrum too where you get these little glimmers of light in the world and it, it makes them more special because that kind of dark stuff is there. So you guys uh, mentioned that uh, you um, actually quit your jobs and went and went full force for this, uh, for this um, I guess you would say, dream of making a game. How, yes. Can you can you take us back to your like when you what was the was was there a, a, something that just made you guys say you know let's screw this what was the thing that that that, that, <laughs> that pushed point. you yeah like what what is the thing that that you know is it was it just a realization like hey guys like we could do this uh, and 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 can you kind of like just take us there and and take us back when when you guys were uh, at that point. Um, and what what may have been a turning point? 
Yeah, sure. Um, so like we, we, we spoke about it and we kind of like did a lot of kind of pen and paper designing and just figuring out what the story would be and what the world would be. Um, and we weren't 100% set on it. So what we did was we took one week off work uh, to just kind of do, I guess you could call it like a game jam with just three of us. And uh, we came up with this sort of very early prototype, which is to say it's, you know, effectively a guy running around in a field doing a couple of things, you know. Um, but it was more about um, consolidating a bit more of an art style, um, pushing things forward. And once we saw that we could achieve that and that we were quite satisfied with that very small little microcosm of a game, uh, I think that was probably the tipping point where we decided, you know, we could do this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. What was your day job before this? Uh, so I was working in the uh, in, in the environments department at Weta Digital. So uh -huh. uh, I'm trying to think what I was working on at the time. Probably yeah. The Hobbit. Um, oh, okay. Okay. But I worked on uh, a whole bunch of movies. Um, uh -huh. So many movies. Um, let me think. Uh, there was like Wolverine, uh, The Avengers, The Hobbit, uh, Tintin. Are you a big movie buff. I am. I, I, th I think so. I'd like to think so. Anyway, uh -huh. uh, not not as of late as much as I'd like. I think I work too much. But um, certainly, like in my university days and stuff like that, I couldn't even go into um, into video stores. Like I would just have watched everything. It was mm. yeah. It was a bit difficult. Had to go to like international film festivals and things like that to see new stuff. So you didn't catch Batman v Superman. <laughs> Haven't got it yet. I, I I don't even know if it's out in New Zealand. Yet, to be honest, yeah. But uh, w w would you recommend? <laughs> you can ask <laughs> Dustin for that one. Yes, it is a great movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's the big DC fan S here. S so. Save yourself for Captain America. If you like comic book movies, go see Batman v Superman. Well, no, let me let me take that back. I rephrase this. If you like comic books, see Batman v Superman. It is right. very very comic booky. Like it's. Uh -huh. Did you like uh, like like Deadpool? No, Deadpool was fantastic. But like Batman v Superman, what a lot of people don't like is uh, the movie will like jump around like pains in a comic book, where it'll just be like, and this scene happens, and then this scene happens, and there's no like real great transition. Uh, ah, interesting. <laughs> so it's very jarring to people that don't read comic books, but to people that do yeah. read it, it's just like, okay, yep, that's what's going on with Lex Luthor. Let's move on. Like it's just, but, it's uh, kind of. But jarring. Zod, Zod doesn't shout in the film, so that just makes it a better movie already. I will find <laughs> him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, um, I don't know. Like, I, I definitely can't knock something for taking chances, you know, doing things a bit differently and like mm -hmm. trying to push the medium a little bit that way. I'd have to see that. No, it's interesting seeing them just go. You know, Batman's a character. You know who he is. No origin story needed. He's he's there. Like the most yeah. you get is like an opening credit where they're like, and his parents died, and this happened, and that's Batman. Like you don't need well, to have a huge. Well, setup. there was even less for Wonder Woman. Yeah. So they really but, didn't I set mean, up anything. She it had... was definitely a sequel to Superman, yeah. though. Yeah, Man yeah. of Steel. Yeah. But it was. I, I enjoyed the movie. I enjoy. All right. Uh, thank you so much for coming on and doing the show with us. And unless anybody, I don't think the pro. Oh no, there was one question. How do you? Uh, would you like to see Microsoft bring? Mm, excuse me. Bring back Summer of Arcade. And would you feature Ash? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was up to you, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, I, I, I certainly think it's a good thing. Um, you know, uh, I, I think particularly for, 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 for games in there, I mean, it, 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 it definitely pushes the marketing for them. It, it, it helps them get their names out there and, and to just, like, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it's amazing. Um, if they... It, and. and uh, I also think it, it, it's kind of like that E3 question where it has to come just at the right time for your particular pro uh, project and when you've launched yeah. and how things have happened. But yeah, it's, a, it's certainly exciting. I mean, we get so many awesome. great games all the time now. It's just, it'd be cool just to say, hey, for, for like the month of August, we're going to have mm -hmm. four games, one a game a week, and they're all going to be, you know, heavily pushed really and developed. Really featured, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, but that's been one of my criticisms, actually, of ID at Xbox. It feels like they're getting all these awesome games, but they're not quite getting them out there for people to see, you know? And I'd, I'd like to see that change. And I, I think something like a, 
you know, like an arcade, bringing that back would really help push those games to the forefront. So, yeah, yeah I think there's like there's a lot of uh, ideas like that which are amazing, and it's it's kind of tricky because the um, the landscape changes so fast in terms mm-hmm. of how you could market a game and and and, and what is games marketing. I mean. Uh, I remember seeing like Fallout got ridiculously marketed just everywhere. There were Fallout posters just stuck mm-hmm. all over everything, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Um, they reviewed and well, and yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, and that, that, that's sort of the old way of marketing, right? But then there's um, the, the the newer way of doing things where it's not about Super Bowl adverts necessarily. It's um, talking to you guys, you know, d- doing yeah. things like Summer mm-hmm. of Arcade and things like that, where you can actually put stuff in people's hands and get word of mouth going and um, kind of do it in a very um, genuine sort of way which is it's interesting but it takes a lot of thought and it, I, I think it's um, it's a tough one to do right yeah well and I bet it's hard with timing too when you're working with something like ID at Xbox it's probably really hard to set dates for all these developers because they're all going to yeah. be on their own on their own in their own time frames, their own calendars, you know, and to just get four of these games back to back, four weeks, that would probably be something pretty difficult to uh, to put together because it would it might require someone having to work harder to get their game out on time, or also pushing back a particular game, and yeah. that might be hard as far as funding is concerned for them. So yeah, I understand that too. So. Yeah, yeah, certainly it would be something like planets aligning <laughs> to get everything. Yeah, mm-hmm. just yeah it, it, it honestly has become, uh, especially for bigger titles too, like triple A's. Like it's be, it's it's gotten down to a science to release the to think the games, like when to release it, when to place it, when not to pl- put it in this glut yeah. of games versus this. Yeah, uh, there's a lot to consider. It's it's kind of fun how. Uh, yeah, this like, is stuff that you don't you we didn't think about you know I, I don't remember talking about this stuff five years ago but now it's central you know do you release this game with an uh you know uh this type of game that's going that day and all that type of stuff yeah yeah, yeah i gotta imagine you don't want ashen releasing next to gears of war or like <laughs> any <laughs> well they typically a, a lot of idea at xbox games do not release during that from what i've from what i've seen might be wrong, but do not release during that that holiday November period. Uh, kind of maybe just because of what's going on. Well, you it know? seems like new IPs in general are are better to go in the beginning of the year rather than the end. Right. You know, your established franchises are going to be during the holiday season. Your new IPs are going to be in the beginning of the year. That way, they can be featured. They're not around titles that are going to swallow them whole. You know, so. Yeah. Although even the beginning of the year is getting a bit tricky these days. With, it is um, s- sort of bigger titles taking a little bit longer than they thought and releasing yeah, in the yeah. beginning of the year uh, tends to be a bit of a theme at the moment. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it's, uh, every, every, pretty much, I know Horizon just, uh, well, it's rumored, but pretty much every, uh, uh, you know, a lot of games, you know. Um, They'll get that last delay, yeah. Yeah, especially on the Sony side has been, um, they, they've, they've pretty much missed all the holidays and just came or out Or even with March. Quantum Break, it was a delay for delay's sake. They didn't want to yes. release it in a heavy period, you know, even though mm-hmm. the game was yeah. pretty much done. So, yeah, yeah, that's pretty common. So, yeah, hopefully you'll get a good window and we'll all play it and it'll be successful. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Sometimes that window, though, is critical. You look at a game like Sunset Overdrive and, you know, for the life uh, all of us, um, on Xbox, on we we don't know why that game did not do well, and uh, or we 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 point to well, it released right in the middle of you know all the big titles, all the all the mm-hmm. known the known uh, things. So it, it is definitely uh, something that has to be taken seriously, and you have to look at all all sides to uh, you know what's a healthy re- oh. uh, release date. And will you guys have any say in that, or is this going to be more of a Microsoft positioning at, at a certain time? How's that work with ID at Xbox if it's... Well, I mean, ID at Xbox, you can release it on your own, but because it's an exclusivity contract, do they have some kind of say in when it drops and all that? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, essentially, I mean, even, um, you know, contracts and stuff like that aside, uh-huh. um, we would really want to work with them on it, and, like, we've, we've got a say in it, and they've got a say in it, but... Um, Essentially, like I mean, and it's the same way they work with us. It's um, it's it, it, it's a very collaborative thing because they want it to do well, you want it to do well. So you so you kind of work together in terms of like what kind of marketing push they could do, what uh, how far along your game is, and and and, and mm-hmm. when you're going to do it. So um, 
Yeah, and I think that's a really interesting thing, just again about the idea of Xbox team, is how kind of um, easy they've been to work with and um, just genuinely wanting to push games and make them good, you know. Um, and I'm, I'm pretty sure the exact same approach will happen towards um, release windows and things like that. Um, yeah, yeah, they've been, they, they honestly, they, you know, they had started, they didn't start uh, Idea at Xbox until, uh, Steve, what was it, 2014, like March? When did they start ramping uh, it up? They had the first title launched in April 2014, and they didn't right. announce it till sort of August 2013 at Gamescom, and they waited until December to right. kind of really bring, announce some games and sort of draw the curtain back. But they've, I think they've, they've come a long way. Yeah, they've, um, like, that's what my, that's what I was going to say is, is that you look at the progression from when they started and Chris Chris, Chris Charler and his team really I mean they I mean this this year and, and and maybe early part of next year you look at their idea at Xbox games it's I it's actually you, you know they have a, a, a five heavy hitters you know mm-hmm. uh, Asher being one of them um, but you know you look at that and you, you you know it's it's a testament to uh, to Xbox and ID they're they're ID and Xbox, they're definitely doing an excellent job there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, I think it's a, it's it's even not the easiest job in the world either. Um, it's a bit like being uh, a music executive or something, like you know, because you're looking at all this really raw talent and you're trying to pick out who is actually who's actually got the goods out of these guys who are all uh-huh. fresh and new. It's it's not like um, I'm sure if you're doing like um, the big Microsoft. Um, sort of studio things, you can just bank on, well, these guys are good, a good reputation already, they made three games, yeah, they'll make another good game, you know, the idea at Xbox guys have to really evaluate it and um, yeah, look a bit deeper, I'd say. Uh, it's um, an exciting position, but also a tough one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right, well, oh, sorry, oh, Steve. Uh, it's just a Will, uh, oh, actually, sorry, I'll the Xbox Live. Okay, question of mind. I was just going to ask it. <laughs> it must be nice for you guys to to be at a show like E3 and sort of have the world sort of see it at, at the conference. That must have been sort of quite good, for, you know. Obviously, for getting the title out there and for people to to see it, that uh, is quite important for sort of how it might do later down the line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, the the uh, exposure we got and just being on stage um, at E3 is one of the most amazing. Like personally, one of the most amazing experiences of my life, but um, also just for uh, for the title, it's um, such great exposure. Um, the people that we've been able to meet um, because of that, uh, yeah, we just you, you couldn't do it any other way. I would say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just wanna we wanna thank you for being on the podcast. We know you're a busy guy and have to get right back to work. I'm sure, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, thanks very much for having me. Yeah, uh, it's been great talking to you guys. Uh-huh. Yeah, we'd love to have you back. Maybe after the game launches, so we can hear from you again, see how things went for you, you know? Be wonderful. Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. Thank All you right, so much for coming on. Thank you. We'll yeah, thank up. you so Thanks. much. Uh, I really thank enjoyed you. it. Thank you. Awesome, man. Oh, bye. Yeah, Ashton for life. <laughs> 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 it's going to be his new avatar, right? <laughs> I know. I like I said. I know this is totally. This game's totally up Phil's alley. So yeah. I know that Phil will be playing this day one. <laughs> and like I said, he he, he chastised me for uh, uh, leaving it off <laughs> the uh, infographic. Uh huh. Yeah. So, awesome. Well, looking yeah, forward. Thank you again for having me. It's been really good talking to you. Oh, All right. You too. Yep. Cool. Take Cheers. care. Cheers. All right. All right. So do you think? Do we want to move on to news or? <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll cover the news real quick. News, yeah. news, 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 news. Okay, okay. Let's see. First news article. This one's uh, reading this on Polygon. HBO I... Now app launches on Xbox One. Wait, what, Dustin? Oh no, I. I it's you're fine. Go okay, I just want to make sure we're timed with what you're putting on the screen, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I can okay. get you... Uh, it doesn't matter. Just go yeah. for it. Okay. Well, yeah, HBO Now app launches on Xbox One. So this is not the HBO Go where you watch stuff that's already been on. This is actually live TV, and you don't need a cable subscription. You can pay fourteen ninety nine a month, and you can watch your Game of Thrones. So yeah, because HBO Go, big. you have to have a subscription with the cable provider right. and you buy HBO from them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for but this, 
Game of Thrones, Silicon Valley. It's like a bunch of shows hit this uh, this weekend, actually. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But yeah, this is exciting because if you just want to subscribe for a couple of months or a few months, you know, to watch your series, and then you're done. And you can come and do it again the next year. So this is pretty exciting, I know, for a lot of people. And it's timed. At the, it's, it's at the right time with Game of Thrones here. So that's really exciting. I got to say, I'm more excited for Silicon Valley. Yeah, I am too, actually. I love Silicon Valley. <laughs> I, I couldn't get into that. I what? Mean, that's crazy talk. I, I started it and I was like... Mm. I, I started it I couldn't put it down. Like I'm super stoked for Silicon Valley. And well, you, this... Yeah. Oh. To, to me, it's one of those shows that kind of, I felt, looked better in the adverts. No, you need to keep watching it. How far did you get into the first episode? Oh, I finished the first episode. I watched. Yeah, you don't give up after the first episode. I must have gone. How many episodes did you watch? Okay, well, I don't quite know. It was a, there was a few. There was definitely, oh. you know, I, I definitely gave it a chance. Yeah, it's just that last episode of the first season to me is the ultimate it's episode pinnacle. of it. And it re- yeah, and it just it gets. That's exactly what the show's about, and yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. Maybe it's a. I would it's quote an American what, what you're thing, talking right? about, but it's uh, yeah. This this <laughs> after right? this interview, yeah. 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 After yeah, the yeah. interview, yeah. I don't want to go down that path. <laughs> the ratio, <laughs> you know, you just got to get the right yeah. ratio. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Anybody watches Silicon Valley would be laughing right now. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next bit of news. Okay, next next bit is Xbox Live sees growth, but hardware dips in Microsoft's uh, quarter three. So it looks like the active user base stands at 46 million, which is down from the last quarter, but up from a year ago. So it's up year over year, down from the last quarter. Which is quite, which is quite a funny. It's fluctuating. Way they put it. Yeah. Hey, you know, well, no, but you hand... usually measure stuff year over year, not quarter. I mean, you do measure yeah. stuff quarter to quarter, but it's a year over year trend that you go off of. Yeah, especially oh, when I, you I look at that. the seasons. You know, like it would funny. be a, it would be lower because you're going from you know a heavy Christ, you know season around Christmas to you know New Year when people might not be as active. So I understand that. We're gonna start dropping all these Xbox Live subscriptions soon. This is when people are gonna have to renew. Mm-hmm. I know I have to renew in like a week or two. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. All right. The last yeah, time I bought gold, I got like four years worth because it was well, cheap. We're, we're not all you, Steve. Did you guys? Did you guys see that uh, GIF of Phil Spencer with the the mouse? No. It's pretty funny. Oh, it's, it's pretty one funny. Gaff. It's on Gaff. on Gaff, yeah. And they have like the Forza crowd under him, and they 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 put his face on uh, what uh, Kim Jong Un. <laughs> I need to see this because it's either going to be really bad. Or it's really, it's funny. really funny. It's really funny. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next bit of news. Unless yeah, next wanna... bit of news. Uh, Microsoft is testing a variety of new Xbox One prototypes. So this is from The Verge. Uh, apparently, there's some prototypes being tested that contain upgraded components. And this is so, after the FCC filing that popped yeah. up. So, well, Did they actually specify Xbox One or just Xbox devices? I think because it just... Seemed, it, it, they made it seem like, you know, there was a lot of different things. They that's were true, at. yeah. I don't know why VG247 wrote testing a variety of new, new xbox one prototypes but well, no, I think that's it was what just the verge even reported is that there were a bunch of oh, yeah. different types of units that they were sending out and just be you know just testing around like there wasn't like one new dev kit that was shipping around um mm-hmm. was, yeah but yeah well, and then also <clears throat> what was it uh with the the earnings report for um amd came up today and they announced that there's what three uh semi-custom chipsets that are in production for 2016 for what late 2016 and into 2017 yes yeah and a semi-custom like a new semi-custom chipset would not be a slim more than likely yeah presumably 
Microsoft and AMD agree that there'll be revisions down the line because obviously that's how you get your cost reductions. So that might so those three devices are that money's already devices. taken. Yeah, this is brand new because mm-hmm. this kind of confirms that it's separate from the what was it two point four billion they spent on the first Xbox One because um, all that money's already accounted for. No, but that was the lifetime. So that's going to cover their slim devices. That's covering whatever the right. the smaller device is going forward. But this would be a brand new CPU, GPU setup, you know, system on a chip that's going to go forward. But what's interesting is they say 2016 through 2017. So I'm, I was thinking about this the other day. If do you think there's a chance that Microsoft is going to push back, let's say if they were going to launch 2016, with the backlash Sony's been getting, and they've been getting killed on the internet yeah. from diehards and everywhere, if they would delay this till next year, just to make sure it's really powerful. I don't think so. I think they'll let Sony better. get the backlash, and then Microsoft will announce it too, and they won't have to suffer the backlash because the backlash already happened. Yeah. Right. The thing is, is that I think there's several things here. So first of all, I think that where PS4 owners are very happy with their current power, to some That's degree, right. Xbox owners are not as happy. I'm not saying they're unhappy, but I think <laughs> they will <look laughs> think there is, you know what, there is room for improvement. So if Microsoft want to do that, I'm quite happy with it. All right. I think that the Xbox owners, the ones that would be allowed on the internet, also probably a lot of them see that, you know, there is mind share and there is branding stigma around the Xbox One. So if they're going to do mm-hmm. something to improve that, Now's I the think time. That those people would be very, uh, they're not necessarily going to go and buy it, but I think they'd all be satisfied or the, the group will be reasonably satisfied as a whole and i think that you know all these people complaining about sony doing things actually a lot of them probably don't own xbox ones so the 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 backlash that sony are going to get is not necessarily the same thing as what microsoft are going to get because microsoft i mean you know that's you know there's no point being around the bush about it they are trailing two to one near two to one whatever so you know if they can do something that's going to reinvigorate their sales because they can fix various issues that they've made branding power you know there's a whole bunch of things that they could do i think that as i said i think the, the fans and the owners that are that on the playstation side are not for what sony are doing on the xbox side you know everybody's sitting there probably thinking yeah All right, i could you know I, I i could i could get behind that or i could see why they want to do that you know, right, well that's the ps4 owners are quite happy to maintain the current status quo and I think there is some genuine concern yeah. that, that if if things are shaken up a bit, they're concerned. I'm not saying it will happen, but I think some of them are concerned that it won't maintain the, the current trajectory, and not all of them are necessarily for that. Well, that was what was curious to me, is that I could see you doing this as an Xbox, um, you know, what, 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 what PlayStation's doing, uh, because there are, uh, there's definitely a, a, an image of power uh, or lack of power when it comes to Xbox One, especially comparatively to PS4. So I, that, that's why it was a little curious for, to me. And what's the end game with this PS Neo? Um, and it's putting Xbox in a position that they're usually not in. You know, they usually were doing their, their trend setting or they're taking. The risk of uh, uh, of doing something like PS Neo, uh, where they yeah uh, yeah, I was I th- say it, Microsoft's always in the position where they're dragging people, kicking and screaming into the future. Right, that's right. that's very common Microsoft to me. Right. Yeah. So I think they could just sit back. My opinion, uh, and and obviously we've talked about it time and time again. Uh, I believe there's something in development as we are, you know, as we talk today, but I don't think it is as uh, close to as people thinking um, it's going to be to a PS4 Neo launch. Um, I'm, I'm thinking something where uh, it's this is going to take a little time, but when it releases, that's the question. Are they going to piggyback onto this gen uh, with a 1.5 model and and go with the wow. Xbox One? Or are they going to rebrand uh or uh you know rebrand themselves yeah. some way somehow uh with this new generation uh equipment i think they rebrand it yeah if they're not going to rebrand then i wouldn't bother 
Yeah. That's see, that's where I'm at. That that's why you know. I mean, I've talked about Xbox Fire and all that stuff. See, before that, Sony hadn't. You know, I thought that Sony had not had this PS4 Neo, um, and I think that would have put Microsoft in a better position than they are now. Not in a great position, because uh, I believe that PS4 could just stay, stay in status quo and be the still the de facto of whatever, because they already are at 1080p. Um, being that now that PS4 is coming out and it's uh, it's a it's a pretty pretty nice upgrade, um, you know there's no use for Microsoft to try to piggyback off of this gen because they're just gonna you know they're playing catch up to uh, oh. something that they that they, they, don't, they won't have a bullet point. Tim, they don't have to piggyback off the gen. They can just release a new console, call it something well, else, have it be backwards compatible, well, that's, have right. it be the same UI, all that stuff. Just call it something right. else. It, it, essentially, it would be a sort of 1.5 or a 2.0 or whatever you want to call it. Because but they're it, gonna, it, it, they'll rebrand it as a service. Right. And right. Well, they'll I, rebrand it somehow. That, and that's where they're going to have to be real smart. That you know, they're in actually a position, like I said, that they've never been in. They're in a reactionary position, kind of like it's always. Seems Are like they so though? Are they? Do we know um, for with, sure? With all of Sony's backlash, I think you'd say they're in a reactionary. They can, yeah. they can well, decide Sony, to change their ship right now. Sony had their cards things. shown first. That's the thing, right? Well, but, that's usually but, the case. That, but, that, that's my point. Is, is that's usually the case that so for whatever it is, Microsoft's always in that position where they show their cards first. Whether it's at E3 and they're E3, the first, they first, go first. Yeah, they go yeah. first, and 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 Sony could just say, okay, well, let's take a step back here. Let's 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 yeah, let's. But, uh, Let's you know, PowerPoint this, this shit up. In 2013, and though, in right. 2013, <laughs> Sony showed their console off first. They showed the PS4 off first, and Microsoft still, you know, it was already in development, so they had to go with what they had. Right. But, but, right. but Sony showed theirs well. They in still advantage. managed to cock it up. Yeah. So. Well, in, in the case of PS4, when that happened, that that took everyone by surprise. But I think, uh, and and definitely, they had goodwill on their side. But I think with in this case. You're seeing a, uh, you know, a um, lot of backlash. Yeah, you're seeing and a think, lot of backlash, and and, and rightfully so. Um, no, but I think Co kind of funny put it perfect. I think Colin put it fun perfectly that this is the first. Like Sony's been doing a lot of right this generation. They did a ton of things perfectly, but they are now putting themselves in the weirdest position ever. They like, are. They, they are. and it's not like the, it was a mistake or any. They're they're literally going out of their way. To, to piss off the hardcore with this well, new console. Or no, no, but that's what it is. When the hardcore. They it's are more pissing off. You got Colin Moriarty. He's the hardcore. Greg Miller, the hardcore. Like you got the he's not big off. PlayStation he's, he, fans. Yeah. No, no, Colin is pissed. Like he, he's not he, pissed. he, he, he repeatedly the says, idea. "I'll buy it," but this is bullshit. Right. <laughs> it's flipping me off. But it, I got the money, and I love PlayStation. But. He's pissed. Like he's pissed I off that they're doing this. I think. I think it's a. It's a big fuck you to PS4 no, owners that got I, them I where really, they are. I don't. I don't really think it is. I just think it's a knee jerk reaction people are having, saying, "Oh, well, that's gonna make my stuff obsolete." When it really isn't. And. Well, if you want to play the well, bad version of the but, game. But, well, but to be Sony fair, hasn't had the yeah. chance to even get out in front of this. I mean, it got no, no, leaked. I agree. But you that's know, so what that's, that's they couldn't what even all this bad explain PR's about. it the way they wanted to, right. and and this is kind of similar to what happened with Microsoft, you know, with the the DRM and all that. They really didn't even get a chance to say what their plan was. It kind of just yeah. Blew but up. To be to be fair, though, when they were given the chance, they didn't they take had, it. They, yeah. they had no answers. Yeah. Yeah. They know because I you you already have people like me. I've had friends that at work they've asked me, "Hey, I'm thinking about buying an Xbox," and I've told them, "I'm like, you know what? First, I'd wait till E3 because yeah. Yeah. there's probably going to be a price drop, and if they do release new hardware this year, they're going to announce well, it no. at E3. So yeah. just don't don't buy. And that's on freaking Xbox, and we we barely know anything for Xbox. Mm -hmm. Sony, See, on the other hand, but, has everything out there like on the table it's just like yeah. yep so if i were you i wait. would not buy well, that fucking playstation just don't yeah, well that's the thing why would you buy a playstation 4 right now with all the oh I, there's this no is, reason this is my problem yeah i agree this is my problem or this is my uh you know this is my hold up with this whole situation they're, they're releasing a system that is uh more powerful in ps4 neo um but they are they have to develop a game with PS4 in mind as a base. Yes. So basically, you're having a system that you really can't um, exhaust all power. Yeah. 
Yes, you can not use to its fullest. But that's um, a good thing, though. That is a ki- that's kind of a good thing because that means you'll get the games in the higher resolution. You know, you know what I mean. You design for the like base, and then you just see, pick up everything else. I, I've noticed well, what, that, that there's talk that they're gonna the 1080p is the minimum. It is, yeah. Resolution. I just think that you know, if this had come out that Microsoft were forcing 1080p minimum, the first thing people would say is, is "Oh, oh you know, the developers." Yeah, and you, then you notice the people that are defending them just think, yeah, well, you know, if, if the shoe was on the other, if the shoe was on the other foot, you would have already thrown it in their heads. Yeah. But I, I think it's interesting. There's a website yes. called Hot UK Deals, which obviously, you know, it's all what? about saving money. And there's a there's a sale, you know, mentions PS4, PS4, not PS5, PS4 and Dark Souls 3 for two hundred and fifty five pounds. And there are thirty five comments, and they are littered with just wait for the Neo. Right, literally. But the, the and, I, thing, and I, I think that's a problem. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, it's, it's a nightmare a for Sony as far as sales from uh, now until when the new right. console comes out. But a nightmare equates to probably still beating Xbox One, unfortunately. It does, um, but you know, this also hurts Xbox sales as well. Yeah, because now everybody's saying, gen- "Hey, gen. there's new hardware." Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they think all the players are going to do it. Like if. The number one top-selling console that has the most powerful hardware is like, fuck, we need to change it, is doing it, then everybody's doing it. Right. Like, but my, 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 my question to all of you is, will there be anything exclusive to PS4, Neo? Will there no. be an, no. an exclusive VR game? No. 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 They so can't then what, specifically what is there, says what is, what you is their end game? Exclusive. Well, their, their end game is so these people equipment. like me and Vern. It is literally to I go, love it. hey, Vern, Dustin, we know you're Let's hardcore get a 4K fans. TV. Well, not even 4K. We know you want to play <laughs> at a solid 60 frames per second in all your games. Like, here it is. And guess what? It's going to be full 1080p. And if it's, let's say they don't. Even with uh, PS4, let's say they don't uh, do 4K, because I don't think they will. Let's say they do 2K, and then they go, all your games, instead of anti-aliasing, we're still going to do that, but we're going to downsample everything. And that way you have this higher resolution image being downsampled, and it looks prettier. It just looks better. And that's something they could push. They could definitely push something over 1080p in their games, a developer well, game could, and just downsample. Because downsampling and, looks great. Like, it really well, in does. in the case of adults. Xbox... In the case of a new Xbox, it'd probably run backwards compatibility okay. better too. Okay, yeah. Let's. Please. We're, we're a little. We're, we're technical but that's, here. No, no, can but you, that's what we're talking about you... for people like me and Vern. Like that's right, who right. This, and, this and is that's, targeted. It, right. But Joe right. Schmo, I, I, I wanted to ask you. You said downsampling. Can you explain what's going on with downsampling to the uh, viewers? Okay, so let's say let's say we're taking a picture with a camera, and this picture is a really large picture, and it's. 4K. We're going to use that word because that's what you're used to now. And this is a 4K picture. But we're going to take all those pixels and we're going to bring them down and make super pixels. So every pixel matters more. Uh, and it's it'll be only a 1080p image, but it'll have like the detail and the sharpness to that detail of a 4K image. So even right, though it's you're rendered not, in one image, yeah. Yes. So it's rendered in one. It has the detail of that 4K image. But it's only in 1080p. So let's say normally the, it'll like go, oh, I'm not sure if that should be a blue or a little bit, a slightly larger or darker blue. It'll have the 4K detail to go, oh, that's what the color's supposed to be. And it'll make that decision that that pixel should be that color. And that's what downsamp, a very generic version of downsampling is. I mean, Hey Tim, it would it would essentially function like anti-aliasing does. You know how when you see oh, all yeah. the jaggies and then they put a right. passive anti-aliasing on it to get rid of all that stuff, it would essentially do that, but in a much better way because okay. it wouldn't be doing it wouldn't be doing something tricky to get rid of the edges. The edges would just be gone because it would be it would know at what a high resolution. Yeah, it would okay. know what the edge is supposed to be. It, yeah, but it would okay. fit it in that 1080p picture. My right. my and second that's question. That's what's done in film, actually. Right yeah. now, could this be something that's done? exclusively for the PS4 Neo um, on a game that's, let's just say, patched. Because I think they're going to go back and patch Uncharted yes. for 1080p, 60 frames per second. Um, yes. And do you think that they have enough horsepower to, to given the current specs, uh, to do that? I mean, Especially. essentially, they could. They're they're running at double. Well, not double the spec, but they're not the GPU is going to be a bottleneck. Yeah, the CPU is a bottleneck, but the GPU is kind of they're 
they're doubling down on performance. So they'd be able to pop two images out. So it's like I said, I, twice. no, but you know what I mean? It's they're popping two images out instead of one. Cause right. even with dual monitor. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, it's a weird thing, but let's just say I, they take that performance and they put it just towards uh resolution and it would, it would help. They, they could definitely do that. Uh, but if you're going to do that, you can't, it, it's unfair to say, Oh, it's just, it's going to make every game 60. It could, right? theoretically, yeah, exactly. That's what but it I depends on what the bottleneck work. is. Yeah. I right. think more likely than having a game that's 30 frames per second suddenly become 60 frames per second with the patch, we're going to see a game that's rendered at 900p or 1080p, so then maybe rendered at like 1440p or so, something that's a higher resolution. Then we and will I think see this frame is, rate boosts. I, I think you're going to see a shitload of PS4 games go 900p. Uh, oh, so yeah, so you, you're going to say that they're going to, they're going to um, develop games, the though. game, the new game, and it'll be 1080p with all bells and whistles uh, versus a 900p a PS4. No, but here's the thing: when I say 900p, they're still going to be pushing a ton of bells and whistles. Right. It's just they're going to have again, to, at, yeah, a, at a point when you get to the end of a generation. No, that's but when, at the system. point when you reach the end of a generation, hardware like it's gonna be, it's gonna compromise the game. Uh, so they can have they have two choices: they can compromise the resolution by bringing it down to nine hundred, have the Neo at yeah, full ten eighty, and then have you know push all the bells and whistles that you possibly can. But I, I think you'll put they'll they'll affect resolution before they affect effects. Yeah, like, I I don't think I don't think we're gonna see a lot of nine hundred p actually, and the reason for this is because the unified memory setup on the ps4 they're not worrying about having to deal with a frame buffer size that's small like um right. like with the xbox one because of the es RAM. Yes, they don't have that they don't have that situation so you're going to see some 900p games like in the instance of assassin's creed or you know uh watchdogs Trump, but right. i i, I, no, I but still i'm not talking about indie games most i'm talking about big triple a huge well, most uh, of the triple a games just... are 1080p already i don't see that changing personally. no but I when think... games get more complex and unreal they start to really push a ton more effects they're going to have to sacrifice resolution and that's where this ps4 neo is going to actually perform way better than the original ps4 because yeah, it has the cu units to push it that, though, it's not no, about the frame buffer happen. size it's about the, the i don't actual... think that's gonna happen though i think they're going to target the ps4 and then the ps and then the neo will just get higher resolution it's not going to maybe be the, the first around. the very first holiday i agree with you but by next holiday the ps4 is going to struggle because people are going to start why building for that? Neo. Why they're going to they build for Neo and, and for 40 million people who have a PS4. Why do people well, stop building for Xbox 360 games and not but and build for Xbox One? For the same this reason. New... No, that's yes, different. Yes, it is. This you're going to push no, for the, hard, the, the putting... better exclusives. When you're put when you're doing backwards and forwards compatibility like this case, it's going to be a different goal, and the goal is going to be to make the base run well, and then the newer version look better. Probably from a resolution standpoint, not necessarily all the other stuff. You do have to have a target, and why wouldn't they target the console that has the 40 million people that own it instead of targeting the console that who knows how well it's even going to sell? Because the next 40 million people that are going to buy that console, like, it, well, maybe two years down the road, that would make sense. You might see them. No, that but happen, like we're but... talking about this holiday season versus next. So this holiday season, yes, you're going to see games that have a little bit better special effects on the Neo, but you're not going to see anything drastic between the two, because they're still yeah, trying to push PS4s. But by the next go-around, it's like saying, well, why would you develop for the new iPhone specs when you have the old iPhone? The old iPhones work just fine, and they have a ton of stuff going on for yeah, them. Yeah, but it's iPhones like, come out they like, have, on a yearly basis. Yes, but on, it's just, no, it's not, because that's it's the point of these new consoles every three years. So you're eventually going to have to start building specifically for the Neo, and you're going to downscale. Three years from now, when the next not console three years up. from now, no. You're going to have to build from the Neo, and you're going to bring your stuff decision. down. That would be a terrible decision. You're going to you no, down why the would resolution you as a developer do that? for PS4. Because you okay. have to reach certain targets on PS4 Neo that you don't have to on PS4. The PS4 does not mandate 1080p. It doesn't mandate a bunch of things. The Neo does. So you have to build for the Neo. And because you have to do it anyway, then you're going to have a, a ported version over to the PS4 that's just lower res. That's, well, that's, that's, there's, that because of these mandates on the Neo. Oh. Yeah, but they've also... I mean... The, I mean, you look at how most games are PC developed anyway. Uh, I don't. 
I, I mean, I personally also probably wouldn't build. I would build for the base PS4 and go up. I think that would be an easier win because if because games companies also got to be careful because if they do because if they do build for the Neo and go down and they can't and they don't make a good version, you're going to upset a hell of a lot more people than the other way around. Than yeah. The other way around. Maybe three years from now, when the new no, console comes out, three years. Can... I'm talking about a year and a half. I'm telling you, yeah. a year and a half, just... you're going to start seeing game developers what's the switch benefit? to the Neo. But what's well, the benefit for developers that's... to do that? But that's what the, you, you the, get to the... put it in your marketing. You can say, "Hey, this is the PlayStation 4." And you could just you don't even have to fucking well, put it PlayStation. But that, well, you're, a big well, image you're with get... the new pretty picture. But what Dustin, you're getting at is the exact reason why I find this whole thing curious, is, is that you really can't do that without gimping the other version. Or no, in totally. Effect, you know, in effect, that's why I don't understand what the end game is here. Is because you're right, they can do that, and they can shaft the PS4 if they wanted to do that, or you know. Um, but, and but what's in the benefit a year and of a half, doing that? In no, but the benefit half? is you're you're going to have the prettiest game there. Why wouldn't you do it? But at the end of the day, you're right. Yeah, you're going to want to develop for the PS4. You're going to want to make sure that you get a good port. However, if the question is, where do you start? Do you start on the Neo or do you start on the PS4? Uh, and I think this is going to be a developer-centric question. I mean, it's not... Right. Like, I don't think Sony's going to mandate that you have to start development on the Neo and downscale. Like, you can develop either way. But the benefit is, is when you go to market your game, you go, look at our game. Right? Doesn't that look amazing? Right. The Neo is the hot new thing. Like, it's it's going to draw... Like, see, it's going to draw I, people to it. I agree. You see, see, what Vern's saying... I agree with what Vern's saying, but I also agree with Dustin's saying because... And that's where it becomes it becomes uh, kind of um, you know confusing because in in a year and a half that developer is going to say shit why do I got to fucking I want to I want to fucking extend this and you know what the PS4 at the end of the day I, if I if I lord myself as the best looking game on the market and I develop this game for the PS4 Neo. Um, I can still get it on PS4, but whatever. If, if and, I have and to, you know, another thing it, is, early I adopters will. buy more games than fucking the casuals that buy the console two, three years in. Like early adopters buy a shitload of games, so you Depends know you'll game sell. Too. Them. Yeah. Well, no, but you 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 know as well as somebody's willing to spend another three ninety nine on another PlayStation Four, they're going to buy a ton of games. Yeah, that that's how a game like Rise, which I liked, probably yeah. sold you know over a million copies. You know. It's going to be front heavy, and then now yeah. you have a back that. catalog, and you're going to be able to sell f to front heavy consumers this whole new thing. So why not target those people? And I and exactly. I do understand and being on the that. cutting edge, because you look at a. I, I do understand that point, but you look at someone like Crytek, and Crytek is always about you know cutting edge. They want to put out the best graphics they can. So yeah, I guess I guess in in that case, I could see a developer like that pushing one and then having the other suffer but i do think in general that's not something we'd see i see i, I would i would think more companies would say let's make the 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 version we need to for the lower spec because that's the console people own right now i know well like i said for the holiday i agree with you but i think what's really going to lend itself to just kind of make a piece here is uh mm -hmm. like systems like unreal engine and crytek do a fantastic job nowadays with trying to bridge specs like unreal engine can do amazing things on xbox one it, clearly through everything we've seen and i guarantee we'll continue to see that like it it would be just like derek was talking about earlier like you could pop it in unreal you tell it hey these are the new specs you can upgrade things make sure the frame rate runs great and just go there it is like yeah it doesn't look better like it in with the new engines and how and DirectX 12 with how it you know adds performance, I could definitely see that being a big factor. But I'm more curious how Microsoft uh, approaches like features. Like, do you mm -hmm. do you go so you did the same features on you... both? Yeah, and that's why I think with Microsoft, you that's why I don't. I think that they have to get away from. You don't want to have this deal where you have to think of the Xbox One. You want to have a console. That is on its own. It's on its own. Mm. It's on its own island because when you have this situation, 
you're going to no. have like what Dustin says, where he's going to say you're going to have a developer that's just going to say, "Screw the PS4. I, I I want my game to look the best it can be, and I want to be a console showcase. I'll do whatever I can." And they 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 could in fact gimp the PS4 uh, version. So that this is this, I, I think Dustin's right. In a year and a half, when all this is not even talked about. They're just going to do what they want, or a developer's going to do what they want, and they're going to target the Neo, and why wouldn't you? Whereas if you're Xbox, you don't want any of that, unless you can scale these games, and I don't know how you could do that, because... Well, the, UWP yes. well, allows... But, 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 UWP but, but, allows... said that's what they're going to do. But, but yeah. ignore, let's ignore UWP for a second. Most games are on PC, and most games get released on PC, so you're going to mm-hmm. have that, that bottom effect based on PCs, you're probably going to have a, a lower level than what Xbox One and PS4 are to work on some PCs and a higher level than what the Neo and Xbox mm-hmm. Two can do anyway. So you're still going to be within that confines anyway. Right. Now, with UWP, is it possible... See, what <clears throat> See what Sony did with this in regards to... They basically took their existing set with PS4, they shrunk it down, and they doubled it, okay? Or they did some tweaks here and there. One of the one of the components of their of their build is this the, the RAM solution. Now, um, does UD do, does UWP eliminate the 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 use of that? Like like if Microsoft were to do this and they went with the ES RAM solution, um, they won't. They wouldn't. They, that's the they thing. They have to find right? out some now, way to emulate it. Okay, so that's the thing. Can they get uh, a, a a a good uh, a good RAM select? Uh, select a, a good RAM and actually have these games both play. And will is it that That's this a, UWP can that merge that and, and can make that yeah. happen? Oh, they could definitely That's a big do question. it. Yeah, I mean, well, I, also, I don't doubt it. Like they, if they yeah, switch but, over to DDR4, they they could yeah, push the. Is that fast enough RAM though, with high with low enough latency? You know, with high enough speed to right. be able to emulate it. That's the question. Is the technology here? To do it in this time frame, and that that that's actually a question for that I've been asking myself, oh, yeah. you know. Which I can't get uh, an answer either. I mean, it's a tough, uh-huh. tough question. But if, if they could come up with a whole new spec unit, then yeah, then 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 I could see maybe them going ahead with this. Or do they have to completely overhaul and start from a base again? Um, or does UWP enable that f- them to just basically say, okay, I want uh, this CPU. Uh, this RAM, this graphics card, uh, and go from there. Yeah, I don't think it's that simple. I think yeah, they'd I have think to find a way. They'd have to find a way to emulate the ES RAM solution to and function even, exactly. Even the if same. they try, if they yeah. tried to do what Sony's doing, they couldn't. Th- they'd be too expensive because they'd, they'd be, be taking up so much of the right? space on the board. Yeah, yeah. And they, they also, want, yeah, they yeah. also wouldn't be able to match them in power because they're they're they're. Uh, you well, know, yeah, they have to GPU. double. They have to double the ES RAM to sixty four right. instead of thirty two, just to fit. You know, the and they still would be behind, right? Just to, just to fit for a ten eighty p frame buffer. And then when you start thinking about four K, it's going to be an even bigger problem. They have to go to yeah. probably one hundred twenty eight. So, so that's why I so, think that they they can't. They well, can't that's why really... Phil said that it's not going to be an Xbox one point five because right. it can't be. If they do an it Xbox one point five, it won't be powerful enough to keep up even with the one Sony's coming out with right now. It'd have to be a significant upgrade that would be that would have to emulate the ES RAM solution. And if wow. they're if these developers are using Microsoft solutions for their workarounds for the S RAM, which it sounds like most devs are since they have the best solutions, it sounds like they have a design path to move those solutions over to a different type of RAM for future that's releases. That's we hope, yeah. Yeah we're, yeah, we're fingers crossed. But that's why they're they're so centered on UWP, and that way they can take all their stuff and just move it to another another right. set of hardware. Uh, but the question is, is, are they ready to move it over to something other than a system on a chip? I'm positive they're going to go, I mean, with the, especially with the AMD news, they're going with the system on a chip well, anyway. Dude, uh, if they could emulate the 360 on Xbox emulate, One like they yeah. did, they can do anything. That software team is a set of pros. So Yeah, so I wouldn't be worried about... I think all your Xbox games are going to work going forward. They're going to probably run better, uh, especially Xbox 360 games. It just has way more power to, to emulate that. Uh, if they get the CPUs uh, a lot stronger, yeah. Yeah. 
And so that's but, the whole thing too about this whole. I, I hope that that um, that they don't go with the um, the CPU same solution. CPU. Yeah, I, I would, can't I, imagine they would. I think the reason Sony's going with the same CPU is to make it easy to go back and forth. You know, from PS4 to Neo. But if but if Microsoft can get around that with their U, UWP initiative and with emulation of things, maybe they can choose a completely different CPU and go all out. Yeah. And, because it'd be interesting and, and, and to see not spend how that much money. You know. Yeah. It'd be I, interesting I to see if they could just put an Intel and NVIDIA chip in and then just say, you let UWP rework the code to talk to the GPU. Yeah. What were you going to say, Steve? I thought that the CPU upgrade in the Neo was, uh, let's, let's be generous and call it modest. Like, I thought it that is. was very strange. It's- it's thing. barely and stronger it's, than the Xbox it's, One. It's not the sort of thing that you're going to get, in my opinion, where you've got games that are 60 frames on one and 30 on the other. No, but it depends on Generally what's speaking. causing those frames. Like if you're, It's usually CPU, though. Yeah. But it's it, I mean, it it'll, puts it'll more help, credence but... to what Vern's saying, where they build for PS4, and they can just push more on, on uh, the Neo. But it, it's... It all depends on what the game's top loaded with, yeah. like how it's. Designed. I feel like Microsoft's in a better position too, because when Sony goes from the Neo to a PlayStation Five, does that mean it's going to be another incremental upgrade, or is it going to be a brand new console that won't play the old games, or will have to emulate the old games in some way, which really makes it difficult for them? For Microsoft, that path forward is going to be a lot more simple because of the UWP initiative. It seems. Right. So, right. Exactly. I think is, well, Sony will have, I think, plenty of time to figure it out. Yeah, make a a, a machine that that's capable of putting the power in to do it. I mean, particularly. Well, you know, no, it's not about the power though. Is the the reason uh, Sony's going with an exact same CPU and pretty much the exact same GPU, just more beefed up, is that the software just talks as if it's native. It there's no confusion for the. The, the software that's already developed to just go, yeah, send it to that CPU, send it to that RAM, send it there, and it knows where things are because the roadmap's the same. Yes, there's a lot more there, and that's faster, and it's more beefy, but the roadmap's all there. While Microsoft can go, you know what? That old system on a chip design with SRAM? Fuck it. Get rid of it. Yeah. Oh, this this these cores? Get rid of them. Like, let's, let's hey. change out the whole thing. Um, Jason think... made a good point here in uh, Twitch chat. He said they'll push GPU, well, GP GPU uh, yeah. compute. You know, so I, that that is the route Sony's going to go because since they doubled the CUs from eighteen to thirty six, like Jason said, and the hundred megahertz bump per CU, um, they're definitely going to be using more of that to account for the lack of CPU power. So, yeah. but yeah. it's Microsoft's in a great position with their UWP platform. For Absolutely. pushing, for they pushing basically just have one hardware. job, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. You guys know what that one job is? Put out awesome hardware. Yes. But no, but even well, just a thought. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Steve. Go. What I was, what I was going to say before is that I think what works to Sony's advantage also is that because they've got unified RAM, they're sticking unified RAM. They don't have the SRAM thing. I think that mm-hmm. in future that will also present a simpler problem than Microsoft. Whereas if if you know if, I mean we've seen that they they can't do PS3 because it's it's so difficult. Whereas obviously I mean you know Microsoft are good with software. I'm not saying Sony aren't, but you know Microsoft work harder than that, harder than, than Sony on that. So I think for Sony that having made those right decisions earlier, even if makes they, it easier going it, forward. Yeah. Yeah. No, but like so, SPUs, I don't think replicating SPUs but, and replicating threads yeah. aren't exactly. I mean. Yes, it's not potatoes to pota- like it, you're you're mixing fruits, but even the the amount the amount of accomplishment they did by replicating power PC on a low end budget end GPU that they stuck in the Xbox One is fucking With a bad insane. RAM solution. Yes, like they're emulating power PC and. It's no a real to Sony. If Sony wanted to do it and they had the programmers of Microsoft, I guarantee they'd find a solution. Yeah. The question is, is Sony it worth said it? They don't know how they're doing it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, like nobody knows how they're really doing PowerPC. <laughs> like it is insane that they can replicate it, but they they found a way, and I 
I really think they're using UWP and like by by keep by having three different OSs on the Xbox One and limiting everything into its own environment, it puts them at a massive advantage to just turning this into an Xbox mm-hmm. platform. And yep. like they've done with their Xbox Live numbers, don't report numbers anymore. Fuck numbers. You can just say, "Hey, Xbox Live users, this is the games we're selling. Right. This is, you know, when we release the next version of the Xbox, it's going to be just as, you know, more powerful. You're going to get all the features, and it's just going to work moving forward." And I really do and believe your old in a, games will work, right? Yeah, I, I think this is a platform awesome. for the future. I'm going to move on to the next story, and we can continue to talk about this because it's still kind of related. Yeah. Um, Xbox 360 is done. They're not making well, any more of them. I, made, I, uh, I said something so much nicer than how you put it. I, I said <laughs> Microsoft <laughs> retiring... No, Microsoft yeah, ret- retires the Xbox yeah. 360. After 10 years. Yeah, after 10 years, the Xbox 360 it's, it's, will no longer be manufactured. It doesn't mean the servers are coming down. The servers are staying up because with Xbox uh, 360 backwards compatibility and Xbox One, they're going to keep those things going. So... Xbox 360 is not dead. It's just they're not making any more of the consoles. It's, it, it's so. retired. It, it's taking a yeah, break. It's retired. It's, it's, yeah, going, yeah. it's, it's going fishing on it, its, it, you know. It lived, it, it lived its life, and it's going to have a good rest of its life. Yes. But um, what was interesting is the very end of this article on Xbox Wire, it says, over the next few weeks and months, we'll be sharing more of our plans for gaming on Xbox One, Windows 10, and beyond. We got a Kotaku link up. I'm just saying, but uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But I went to Xbox Wire because I wanted to get the exact quote. I know, but I, I just I I have their name up, so I always like to give. Credit oh, that's all right. Well, Kotaku, yeah. yeah, you're awesome. <laughs> no, no, I just I like to give credit for the you know the sites we use. I, know, I made sure I know, that their logos are all yeah. up there. Yeah. Okay. I still think they missed an opportunity to get the Xbox 360 in like ninety nine dollars in a much smaller thing. I mean, I get why they didn't, but. They should have done it. It's because they're moving on, man. They're moving on to the new Xbox Fire. It's time. It's time. Uh, now, um, uh, just a quick question. Uh, I know we kind of moved on for. I just have a quick question. Now, a game like Quantum Break with the UWP platform, uh, let's say Xbox <laughs> East Fire comes out, okay? Is Quantum um, Break finished and fixed by then? Okay, let's just pretend it's finished and fixed. This is two years. They can bring it over, yeah. They can bring it over. Two years, no, no, six months. No, no. But here's the thing. (laughs) Let me let me explain it this way, Tim. Let's say let's go with an easier game. Let's say Halo Five. Halo Five comes over to the Xbox Fire. Mm. Halo Five will instantly run better without anybody adding anything to it because the platform is designed to adjust resolution on the fly depending on hardware. So you, with everything scaling automatically, you can just let the new, more powerful hardware do its job. And you don't have to sit there and reprogram or patch the game. It's just the hardware can do it and it scales. And that could actually honestly be the future for both PlayStation 4 and Xbox One going into Neo and everything else because this... This is what, you know, even Sony developers have said, yeah, scaling, you know, that's that's the way we're going to do it. It'll just automatically scale. Because it's, most people have kind of agreed, frame rate is king. Like, it, it just is. And even if they, if it was just, hey, I want a solid 30, and if it ever goes under 30, keep the 30, and let's lo- lower the resolution a bit, most people will agree, that's fine. Yeah. As long as, you know, it's easy. like for a frame or two, you know, right? Right, Vern? Like, if, if you yeah. only had one frame out of 30 that went to 900p, just so that you could get that frame out and it's a solid 30, nobody's going to notice that frame. People will be happy yeah. with the image. Yeah, and the Xbox design allows it to change the resolution on a frame-by-frame uh, basis, actually. This is something we talked about a long time ago on the podcast, and I, I had suggested that we'd probably see a lot of uh, variable resolution games, and we are, and we are, but it's built into the hardware. It has three display planes, so it, yeah. it can render at one, it can show at another, and then it also has another plane for uh, any UI stuff. So that's that's the advantage of that particular hardware compared to but PS4. But I could see Sony which, adding that software-wise, like just 
Yeah, to have might. variable it resolution, might. just because it would make it would make DUI developing well. for the Neo yeah. a lot easier. But for the most 360 developers. has two planes. The yeah. b- b- the the one has three, so it allows it to have one for the UI, one for, one for the actual console UI. I'm talking about. Yeah. Another for the rendered resolution, and another for the displayed resolution. So you have three going on at once, which is a really cool thing. Hopefully, and they'll I'll, bring that to the next Xbox as well. I wouldn't be shocked if the Neo steals that. To yeah, be it might. It because it's, it's just a, it's a good it's design good for game consoles because you have yeah. so so many UIs yeah. running around. It makes sense. But to get back to, to what uh, Tim was saying about the UWPs, like for example, Quantum Break. Right now we know that at four when you run it at 4K, it runs at 1440p actually with four times uh, of multi sampling. You know, um, they could probably transfer that right over to the Xbox, whatever the next console is going to be called. Run it and possibly even run it at 1440p because it might be powerful enough to do that. And bam, you got a 4K game right there. You know, uh, Ori in the Blind Forest will probably be able to be run in 4K natively. You would you would assume because of the type of game it is. Uh, Killer Instinct is already a UWP. That would be easy to bring on over and probably run, if not 4K, pretty close. It might be doing 1440p or 1800p or something like that because I'm currently on a R9 290 from AMD and I can run it at 1800p well over 60 frames per second. That game's optimized really nicely. So who knows? If they have the right hardware, they could probably have Killer Instinct at 4K at launch. That's incredible. Um, also, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider is already a UWP. That would be an easy game to go ahead and patch over and have it launch. Um, and then all the other games coming out in the future... I would assume would have those patches too. So you're talking about Recore, Halo Wars, uh, Gears of War Four. Will probably well, they're already be talking in the same to the developers about using. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And then Halo Five, I would assume, would get a patch just because it's a popular game. But I mean, I think they're in a pretty good situation where even if they launch this year, they could have a lot of content on that new box running at maybe close to 4k resolutions which would be pretty exciting yeah because even if they just had a game like halo where let's say halo's doing everything they could run it at at maximum 3k and keep the frame rate to how they want it and then they could just scale up to 4k natively and that way you get the uh, a much cleaner image i mean no it wouldn't be 4K, oh, yeah. but you could have much That's cleaner better than 1080p. Yeah. yeah um and i you know that's the for this generation i think that's the best you're going to get I, I don't think you're going to get a ton. I mean, simple games, indie games, maybe Killer Instinct, games like that, yes, you, you, you're you going to get 4K games. But, like, high-budget titles, I think, uh, I think you've got like another six, six, seven years before you really yeah. start seeing tons well, of 4K gaming. Well, no, we'll, we'll, we'll see solutions like what we see in Quantum Break. They'll, no, but what I'm talking about native. Bring, like, yeah, native. Yeah. That's, that's not well, this they'll, hardware they'll, cycle. Well, but, they'll create a native resolution through some kind of interpolation or something. Yeah. You know what I mean? It'll that look way it's pretty. not upscaling. But you know, yeah. if you can get around upscaling, it's always better. Because if you're not upscaling and you're doing something else, you're not going to see the shimmering and the jaggies like what Steve was talking about that he didn't notice in Quantum Break, you know? Quantum Break for life. <laughs> <laughs> Did you if you're listening to this and you haven't bought that. Quantum Break, put the show down. Don't put the show oh, down. So good. Go on Amazon or your local equivalent and buy while, Quantum Break. While listening to the show. I'm just while listening to there. the show. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Fact, it's fact, audio. Fact, right? If you haven't bought it already, then you owe them. But anyway, uh, that's all the news. I don't know. Does anyone have want to make any closing points on this uh New hardware thing we've been hitting for the last few weeks. I don't want to talk it's about new. Still... I want to talk about our memories of 360. It's so sad. Okay. Does anyone have a memory of 360? Well, hold on like a second. Share? I, was... I want to talk about Geometry Wars, Steve. Steve. Steve has a closing point. Steve. It it still wouldn't shock me if they didn't have new hardware this year. But if Microsoft mm-hmm. are listening, I want you to know that if you don't, I may not be surprised. I will be pissed. Yes. I agree. I want you to know, I will be pissed. Like, you will you suffer the wrath of Steve. The, I mean, I, I don't like carrots, so I'm not going to use carrot analogy. You can't put, like, I don't know, a really nice chocolate bar or something in front of me and then, like, not so, let me uh, have uh, it. Uh, well, they technically never put a chocolate bar in front of you. You're they kind of did. No, they Phil, did. Phil, Phil Spencer did it. No, he this is. Cho- no, he hey, wait a second. Bar in front of him. Tim, Tim, did. they did not he eat did. a chocolate bar. This is what happened. If we're going to use food as an analogy. He's cooking bacon in a kitchen and you're across the house. You smell it. It's tempting. 
and then no, if they don't no, give it he, to you this he year, he turned around to me and said that he is going to make bacon. No, I don't think, I don't he, think, said no, I don't think he, he said that. I don't think he said that. He didn't make bacon. What he did, he's going to make Canadian bacon, and you're going to be but, pissed, right? Finished. Finished. He's told me that he's going to make bacon. I've assumed that because it's you know in the morning that he is going to make me bacon either for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. So then <laughs> I get through the rest of the day, and at some point I'm expecting to have some goddamn bacon. And if there's no, and if there is no bacon, I'm going to be pissed. And I'm legitimately because why would you need he to tell me? He never told that you're... you he was going to make you bacon. Yes, he said he did. no. He said yes, he did. bacon? He... Question mark. And you were like bacon. Okay. And then why he never said anything. <laughs> Why tell me that you're going to make bacon before I've had breakfast if you're not going to make it that day? He asked about bacon. He never said he was going to make you no, bacon. No, he he did, not no, asked. put bacon, question mark, they question mark, should, question mark. That's it's right, Tim. Way. Thank you, Tim. Help he me. said bacon, question mark, question mark, question mark. No, this sorry, this is a bacon situation. Don't and this. don't get me wrong. Once I start smelling bacon, I want fucking bacon. And if I don't get my bacon, <laughs> I'm a big guy. I need bacon. Okay. I gotta stop the bacon talk because we gotta move on. This show's going on forever, so I think it's time to move to letters. All can right? I? Can I just? I, I want to say Geometry Wars. We you, love you. you. Yeah, you get your last point about 360. The geometry Xbox Wars. 360 you want to say anything about? Going. You want to say anything about 360, Tim? Time for letters. No. Yeah, we only got two letters. It's gonna be fast. Yeah, we oh, got okay. time. It's gonna be fast. Any any 360 talk, Tim? Uh no. I mean, I I feel bad, but you know, the one the great thing is is that uh, with. Uh, what Xbox One did, they you you kind of you kind of live through 360. 360 lives through the Xbox One through backwards compatibility. I think somebody awesome. put it, and um, it's a good thing. I mean, it, uh, you know, I, I honestly um, was done with Xbox 360 maybe a year and a half ago. Like I would not touch it or be playing any of those games. But with backwards compatibility, uh, I feel like them. it's I, I'm playing them and and I and I look forward to the releases. I mm -hmm. I want I want uh, Blue Dragon and I want Lost Odyssey. Uh, well, I want those games. You know. Well, in uh, backwards compatibility news, uh, Rayman Origins was released today for backwards compatibility. So there you go. No, but I just keep them coming. Throw it up there. Uh, 360 was Microsoft's greatest generation so far, and it was an amazing oh, was generation. Great. And I th I'm. I've, I think everybody has fond memories of the PS3 360 generation. Like, it was a great console to have. Last like, PS3. No, the PS3 like... came out strong in the end. Like, it, I think both of them had an amazing generation. I... I like, think uh, that generation was really defining 3D gaming, you know, because yeah. with uh, with the PlayStation and Nintendo 64 and Saturn, it was in its infancy. But the PlayStation 2 and GameCube and Xbox, it was finding itself, you know. And, and then, then with the most the 360, it, you had rock polished. band, you had like everything was just fucking top notch. No, online but that, was that, there. But 3D gaming like, was polished, and online gaming was solid. Yeah, especially yeah. in 360. Yeah. But also, never Steve, forget 360. Steve, anything about 360? Or are you done? I mean, gears. Gears. Yeah. Like, 360 I, gave I, us gears. Yeah. Let's yeah. let's let's sit back and and let's just have a moment of silence to appreciate gears. Well, now what about three sixty? Well, we'll, yeah, we'll, three sixty was gears. So the original gears and three sixty was a beautiful moment. It really was. Yeah. yeah, it really was. Okay, I'm going to letters. Our first letter is from Sean. Sean writes, "Hi guys." Enjoy the podcast. You guys do a good job discussing the hypothetical future of Xbox and what directions it could possibly go. I would say, especially for the last three weeks. With all the news of Sony Neo and the rumors that Microsoft is going to do something similar, what are your predictions on the price and release date for the next Xbox? I feel holiday 2017 would be a good year to do this. With annual price cuts of $50, the current Xbox One could be available for around $199 then. This would allow a new box to sell for the sweet spot of $399 and restart the four-year cycle. Also, do you think it would be smart to offer only the box by itself at that time? I have multiple controllers, HDMI, etc. So why not offer those who are just upgrading only the box to keep costs down and encourage upgrading? Thanks, Sean. Well, Sean, we did talk a lot about this already, but we never talked pricing. So what do you guys think about pricing? I would, I, I've would. i said from the beginning I'm a big pro four-year cycle guy, but I think it's going to be three-year cycle now. Um, and I feel like 249 for the Xbox One and 499 for the, the Fire. 499 
So you don't think yeah. they should go three ninety nine to compete with Sony? Uh, I think they should. I think suppose, I think Sony after this backlash will pop up its specs because it's rumored that they were looking at two different spec options, and I think a higher gonna, CPU was the yeah, option. So yeah. yeah, I think they're going to both Microsoft and Sony are going to come out four ninety nine because they're not. If they were getting rid of the Xbox One and PS Four, I'd agree you need to go cheaper. But because this is a, a, a an upgraded console, like you you go all out. You give people, if you're going to get people for three ninety nine, go ahead, do the extra hundred, make that hardware as powerful as possible. Personally, Steve, I think that well, first of all, they can't afford it. Might well, I mean, they can afford lower specs than than the Neo, but they can't afford much more than probably about ten, twenty percent. Um. But they need to go three nine nine, in my opinion. Like they can get away with four nine nine if Sony go four nine nine. But they can't count on that. Three nine nine is is the sweet spot, and they should not be announcing a price until Sony announced theirs. I no, agree. Yeah, I think at E three, at E three, they need to just say it's coming, and then don't announce a price. And if Sony announces a price that night, then they announce it at Gamescom. Yeah, they they can't go first this time because they can get screwed. Yeah, yep, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Tim? Tim. What do you think about pricing? Uh, I'm going to say uh, 499 for uh, PS4 Neo. Um, and I'm going to say 499 for, uh, or three, maybe 449 for PS Neo. I don't think it's going to be 399 but um, uh, I think it's going to be higher. But uh, I think Xbox is going to be 499 as well. Um, but I expect the timing still to be 2018 i mean it's very possible <sighs> it's still gonna go i know that Vern asked me because i had wrote a post he's like 2017 now question mark and he's like uh it's you're revising 2018 is suicide and suicide I'm still going with 2018. you know what hey hey i gotta give tim for holding to his convictions this man <laughs> he doesn't waver it well, does listen, true. I mean, I, I just, I, I, just... I, I do not want this box until 2018. That's I don't think opinion. they can. I don't think they can afford to have this box till 2018. I said this even before all this stuff happened that they could not afford to take this box to 2018 or even 2019 or 2020 by yeah, itself. I, 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 I don't agree with that. We've went through this already. Yeah, <clears> we I... gotta move on then. Yep. Gotta move on. Time we've, to move. We've been on. arguing about this too much. I gotta move on to the next letter. Uh, we actually have three letters. I was wrong. It's not two. Uh, this one's from Special Ed. He write this is through Twitter. That's why I forgot. He says, "Good day, Uncut Crew." Good day. Currently, it seems, at least to the naked eye, that Microsoft is paring back on first-party studios and going down the route of third parties creating first-party content, which I personally have no issue with. And Killer Instinct is a perfect template to use for this model. How would you guys feel about Microsoft taking it one step further and approaching third-party publishers and offering to buy slash revive long dormant or abandoned IPs? It allows them to save money on maintaining their own studios but continue to provide their platform with quality exclusive content. All with the added bonus of strengthening the relationships they have with these third-party publishers. In this scenario, which IPs would you like to see Microsoft target? For me, it would be Maximo, uh, through Capcom, Streets of Rage, Sega, Altered Beast, Sega as well, uh, Rock and Roll Racing, which is Blizzard Activision, Captain Command, Capcom, I'm not familiar with that one, God Hand, which is also Capcom, and Gun Valkyrie, which is uh, Sega. I could throw uh, mine out there real quick. Uh, Insomniac. One second. Oh. S- and oh. letter. All the best. Special Ed. Feel free to pronounce it. Special Ed Vern. No, I'm pronouncing it how I see it. I'm not listening to you. I don't appreciate that. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'll say Special Ed if you really want me to. Uh, Crimson Skies and Insomniac. I think they could. Well, do Crimson it. Skies is that's a Microsoft not, IP. That's not really what he's asking. Oh no, I thought he said a Microsoft IP made by third parties. No, no, he's no, a third party one. IPs. Yeah. Oh. Like uh, Dead Rising or Final Fantasy or. Right, like money hadding a third party game, say that would never have come out otherwise. I, I think there'll be another Dead Rising, so that's not a good choice. Um, I mean, the idea is interesting, but I'm not. 
I, I'm no longer interested in Microsoft money hanging games unless unless you know the game is in is in serious serious trouble. I just I would rather at this point Microsoft just focus on first party content. So if Microsoft are going to get to own these IPs, buying them off someone, then that's fine. That's different, yeah. So uh, you know I'm content with that. I think there's probably some interesting things they could do with with the IPs that aren't going anywhere. Um, uh, I'll throw it out there. It's not a micro. It's not an Xbox game, but I'd love to see Microsoft buy Red Alert. I think they could do a great job with some Sega franchises too, man. Yeah. There's so many no, Sega just, franchises that just aren't getting used, you know. And it's yeah, like, like I, I don't want to. Like. I'm gonna agree, kind of agree with Steve. Like I just I don't want to see them buy IPs because they have so many of their own, and I'd like to see them loan out their own IPs to other endeavors to go. Hey, Insomniac, would you like to play with Crimson Skies Universe? Build something. Well, that's with the thing. It. Insomniac would never do that, though, because Insomniac wants to create and own their own IPs. I know, but that. like, I guarantee there's plenty of like, like they 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 gave Met and I think give Mech Warrior away, but they were like, hey, you want to do Mech Warrior? We don't want it. Here's the game. Like, yeah. just build it, and we'll take our small cut. Like, I'd like to see them. I'd rather see them do that because they have they they have so many so, of their own their own underutilized IPs. I don't want right. to see them just like go, that's, yeah, fuck all the stuff we have in our back catalog. Let's just buy other people's stuff. Like, yeah, that's like what Square Enix is doing. Square Enix has that initiative called what the Collective or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Where they're yeah. having uh, independent developers claim a certain IP that isn't being used anymore and make a game. You know, yeah, that used I, to be an I old Square see game. That. Yeah, I'd That'd love to see that with Microsoft. Uh, but, I mean, yeah, I, I'm a huge fan of Red Alert. If anybody can bring it back on PC, I would be all for Microsoft like yeah. doing that again. Um, and that could be a great thing for the Windows 10 store, like just to have it, like having Red Alert back to compete yeah. with StarCraft. Because we don't have many RTSs that left anymore. Like, they're, they're, they've, Dota has killed them all. Like, they just, people play I... Dota. And this one example, Gun Valkyrie, I would love to see that revamped because with when it came out, controllers didn't have all the buttons you need on it to kind of do the things they were doing in that game. But if they came out with that game now, it would function kind of in a lot of ways like Halo 5 does now with the boost. So they could really nail it, and it would be a cool game. So, yeah, I'm all for that one, uh, Special Ed. Jason said Sunset Overdrive. <laughs> Okay. What about uh, Steve? You have any particular games you think it'd be interesting to do that with? Um, I mean, I mean, I did ask. I actually asked Phil in 2013 if they would buy Geometry Wars from Activision, <laughs> and he said that they kind of talked about it. And then I think in, they got the idea to do it. I mean, that's probably the only one I'd want. And I, I don't feel like Geometry Wars Dimensions. I, I mean, I. I I'm not convinced that it actually exists except in my nightmares. Yeah. So I'm going to say like Geometry Wars and then they can give it to Stephen Cape Bread and you know he can make it he can make Geometry Wars 3 right again. Because, Re- relevant. Because I want because I want to be very clear. I'm it totally doing exist. Well they, I'm, do, I'm doing oh, pictures of uh of what what is that guy running for uh president um why am I blanking on his name? Trump. See, this is Trump. Yeah, that SOB. I'm going to put Make Geometry Wars Great Again on all the shirts. It's going to be... Well, it's going to build what a wall. they can do, too, <laughs> they, can, they can just not even put a number behind it. They can just call it Geometry Wars. You know? No, it has to be Retro Evolved 3. Yes. Yes. Okay. Because that would that would show a commitment to the first two games and, like, go, fuck that shit right there. That Dimension shit. Like, we know you didn't like it, we're, we're coming back to our roots. Well, what's the so third one called? Loved. Is it called Geometry Wars Retro Evolved 3 or just Geometry Wars 3? It's, it's called, called Geometry, Geometry Wars, Dimensions. Wars 3 Dimensions. And then yeah. about six uh, months after launch, they released Dimensions Evolved, which is like an upgraded version where they kind of tried to fix all the stuff that they... Right, so they could up. call it Geometry Wars... What'd you say? Uh, Retro, Retro Evolved, Evolved 3. Retro yeah. Evolved 3. Yeah, that's a good idea because then it could still work as a number 3, but not... Yeah, I yeah. agree. Tim, you got any old games that you that Microsoft doesn't have? This is uh, about Tim's got back. something good here. I bet he's got yeah. something good. I want Altered Beast. I would love to see an Altered yeah. Beast um, game. Eyes from your grave. Uh, yeah, I would love to. <laughs> yes, and um, <laughs> uh, 
Uh, this is, I think, my, I, I don't think Microsoft owns it. Mecha Salt is definitely one of my. Um, they own Mecha Salt. I don't know. I don't know if they own because I had asked. They do. Uh, no, know, they do. Old... They gave it. They gave. Well, Fast uh, Studios it's, it's not... did it. Yeah. Did it right? Because I had the reason why I had asked uh, on on another podcast. Aaron had came on and and he freaked out when I was like. Uh, I basically said uh, Mecha Salt with the cloud, and then he got like really. He's like, "Oh well, I don't know. I don't know if it's uh, if, if that's our yeah, studio or." Um, but if they do, I, I, I would love to see yeah. that with. Yeah, they own all those Fasta franchises. Yeah, yeah, it's a really weird thing they're doing with it because they it's, they own they're it, leasing but it. they're leasing it out to somebody else. So they own it, but they can't do anything with it because it's leased. <laughs> well, the contract might not say that they can't. I mean, there are two different shadow run things going on out there. There is the, the uh, Hairbrain Schemes shadow run, and then there's shadow run online. So, I mean, it depends what they put in the contract as to whether or not they yeah. can actually. It could be that they say, well, you can make this, but, you know, if we want to make something, right. we're still going to do that. Okay, well. I mean, the chances of them actually doing it are low, but. Yeah. Thank you for writing in uh, Special Ed. And let's move on to the last letter. This one is from the Wicked Soul. He writes, Hey friends, do you have any factory sealed games? I only have three. Assassin's Creed Unity on Xbox One, Assassin's Creed Brotherhood on Xbox 360, <laughs> and Pets 2, Game Boy Advance. Name of game is probably wrong. If it is, I'll correct myself during the show. From your boy, Wicked. I don't own any. I don't own any, especially this generation because um, I went on digital, but I've considered uh, like to buy another factory sealed steel battalion just to have it. Yeah. I did have a factory sealed game until about half an hour before the show. <laughs> and that was Ratchet and Clank. So technically I feel like I passed that, but then I unsealed it, so... Mm-hmm. Yeah, you you failed miserably with the rest of us. Yeah, all right, Dustin. <laughs> um, I have a bunch of three uh, X OG uh, Xboxes um, games, uh, Freedom Fighter, uh, a bunch of them. Uh, I would say about ten, um, and maybe one three sixty. And I'm all digital this year, so. But yeah, still battalion. I totally want to get that giant box, factory sealed stickers, all still on it, like. They go for around, I think it was two fifty still. It's such an amazing game. Did anybody else play? No. No, I never did. I didn't want to spend that much money for the whole controller and everything. So. You should have bought the next sequel. Oh gosh, I'm glad I didn't touch that. I'm well, it had a good sequel that. just out there for it. it. Did have a good sequel. Yeah. Before the connect. The connect one. Yeah. No, it had uh, it had Steel Battalion, and then Steel Battalion Second Strike, I believe, was the name, and then the Connect game, which was still a sequel, and therefore counts for what I'm saying. No, no, I'm just one. saying it. It no, the Connect one was not the best one. No, I the first one was oh, the, the second one was called Steel Battalion Line of Contact. Yeah. Line of Contact. That's that's it. Yeah, yeah, and then the Connect one was called Heavy Armor, which no one cared about. Nobody cared about. One. Yeah. But yeah, I totally want to buy that sealed. I think that'd be awesome. But then I'd also need to buy an opened one, so I didn't have to open the sealed one. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'd buy yeah. like four of those and send them to everybody on the podcast, so we could all play amazing battles together mm-hmm. over land. Mm-hmm. No, y- y'all don't sound excited. You know, excited. Nah. nah. Uh, so fun uh, fact: uh, Steel uh, Battalion Heavy Armor, the Connect game, was made by From Software. Why is it that when From Software made 360 games for Microsoft, they were all dreadful? <laughs> yeah, Ninja was like, it Ninja Blade? So they made a Toggy, and they were pretty, the, the two of those were pretty good. Although they were with Sega. I mean, okay, they made Chrome Hounds. I that mean, was good, yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah, Shadow Assault Tenchu, which has a most critic of forty six, is an arcade game and was bloody awful. I mean, this Armored Core game with Ubisoft was. Bang average, so not for Microsoft. Ninja Blade, they made with Microsoft, came out in 2009. At one point, it was rumored to be like some sort of Metal Gear killer. And then it came out and it was... I mean, it's 68%. I mean, it's not terrible, but... Yeah. Yeah. All right, just to throw some games out there from the chat. Max Payne, 
Mech Warrior, uh, Streets of Rage, Fight Night would be awesome. House of the Dead. Uh, I think they top spin. Some good ones. Yeah, some really good ones out there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, we're going to. Are we going to do releases? Do you have releases, Steve? If you don't, we can just skip it. I do. Um, I realized about two thirds of the way through the show. No, actually, Derek was still on, so. Whatever. Okay, so April 22nd is a Rugby Challenge 3 England edition, apparently. I mean, it's a rugby game, I assume. That's... Um, uh, April 26th. Yeah? Okay, yeah. yeah it's, you broke Everybody up broke up. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so it's April 22nd, Rugby Challenge 3. Right, April 26th. Oh, I have to get my store page back up now. Uh, Aliens vs. Pinball from uh, Zen Studios. I mean, they do a lot of like Star Wars and South Park yeah. and all that stuff. It's quite fun. Uh, King's Quest Chapter 3, Once Upon a Climb. Um, that's taken 18 months, I believe, to get three episodes yeah. out. Um, Those are big finished. episodes, though. It isn't like Telltale, where it's like two hours. I mean, these episodes are like five to six hours of gameplay a lot of the time. Okay, well, that's fine. Um, yeah. My favorite release is not the last one, by the way. It's a game called Party Hard. Okay, this is the Xbox Store description. In Party Hard, you play as someone who is really tired of the neighbors having loud parties. Instead of calling the police, <laughs> listen to this, you decide it's a better idea to kill everyone using your faithful knife in the environment. <laughs> that's and amazing. This tactical strategy follows a series of killings at parties throughout, which is spelled through and then ought, with a hyphen, uh, the USA. That's not used for throughout. Uh, the developers used to work mostly on casual, family-friendly games until they participated in Game Jam, creating a party for creating a prototype for Party Hard. So they made casual family friendly games and they thought, I oh, know, let's have a, a thing about killing people at parties. <laughs> uh, That's awesome. I think there's a direct correlation with that, so... Uh... So, a not serious story, well, I'd hope not, that follows a series of murders throughout the USA. 19 unique levels with random variations in each one. Use traps, cause explosions, become a ninja. I mean, that's a whole different thing. Um... Multiple unlockable characters, like what different domestic terrorists, um, multi uh, special random events like a bear coming in and killing everyone for you. Fuzzy I, Duplicator, I, I appreciate approve. that. Yeah, I approve. Trigger the DEA, SWAT cars, paramedics, firefighters to come in and ruin the party. Five playable characters: the guy who wants to get some sleep, the ninja who is fast, stealthy, has a smoke bomb but shouldn't be seen. The cop who can carry around bodies without suspicion and frame other people. The girl who can knock people out. Interesting. Uh, the butcher who has a chainsaw. So that's, I believe, around $15 on the Xbox store. To be fair, these images... I don't think it looks bad from what I've are seen. Not, are not putting me off. Yeah, I, it's, it's, it's a pixel art game. There is a free trial. I'm actually I'm going to install it. <laughs> you can All report right. on it next week. Yes. Okay, What's the next it. game? <laughs> okay, I'll I'll know the stores stores crashed. Um Okay, so the next game is Battle World Kronos. Um which is a turn based strategy game that stays true to its hexagonal roots, inspired by classics like Battle Isle. I've never heard of that. The planet is once again torn by war for the succession of a new emperor. The destiny is in your hands. And images actually look surprisingly good. They must be they must be bull shots. I don't know. I might have to check this game out. Um, and then the final game is called This is actually my second favourite game of the week. Jump Jet Rex. Take control of a T-Rex with extraterrestrial jump boots, tasked with saving Dino Kind from extinction in this highly challenging 2D platformer. Race against the clock as you jump, drop, and dash your way through 40 challenging levels to preserve life during the Mesozoic era. Killer old school gameplay, retro platformer flair, secrets with collectibles. I mean, it looks fucking dreadful, but that's a pretty, pretty good description. 
I might have to buy this because I do genuinely like to buy dinosaur games. I mean, I did buy Rip Tour for a dollar just to just to back dinosaurs, and I bought like a Jurassic World, so maybe I'll buy that. And Far Cry, for whatever reason. Well, Primal doesn't have dinosaurs in it. So I know, that's... but yeah. although I did buy Blood Dragon, so that counts. Anyway, that's that's it for releases. Can I just admit right. something real quick? What? As Steve was talking, he sold me on Party Hard and I bought it. Yeah, I oh, wow. must admit. I'm it, real... it looks pretty good. I watched the trailer of it just now and I'm kind of interested in myself. I, I, mean, I had $13 like... of Xbox Live credit. It just went, yeah. this is the perf. This is it. This is the Because I've been looking it, for something. This is the game. It sounds like an absolutely god awful idea, but actually, yeah. it looks reasonable enough that it might just be fun. I mean, it's a bit like, I mean, a bit different, but Plants vs. Zombies Card Warfare, when they announced that, everyone was like, who the fuck asked for this? And then actually, it was pretty good. It was, it was amazing. Very good. So, it was amazing. maybe it's a similar thing. Uh, I'm hoping. Right. I can report on that next week. Oh, definitely. <laughs> okay, so we gotta move on to what you've been playing. Let's go through this pretty quickly. Uh, Steve! Yeah. What you been playing? Oh, uh... We're switch. We're staying on one game each, right? Absolutely shitloads of Halo Wars. Um, a bit of Rocket League. Well, it's not my fault you've got bad taste. Um, <laughs> a bit of Rocket League, a bit of Don Brabham Cricket, uh, Gears of Four Beta, which is very good. I like it a lot. Not perfect. Perhaps we'll get into a bit more next week. Um, have I been playing anything on my PC? So I think so. I mean, I, I finished, I got the achievements in Quantum Break, and then, mm-hmm. uh, see, so with Quantum Break, I have died for, for all of your sins, because I have this theory, right, that I sold Far Cry Primal, and the day after I sold it, they announced the Survival Mode DLC, which actually sounded like something I might want to play, so I have sold Quantum Break, so that we get DLC, like, well, I, have done, I have done this for all of you, so if they don't do it, None of you can be like, well, Steve, you didn't try. That's true. Because I did That's true. You. The, fact, the fact that I got more than I actually paid for it is completely irrelevant. Um, I did it for you. Thank you, Steve. We appreciate yeah. it, Steve. And it, so if they don't do it, I'm going to be pissed. Microsoft UK should just brace themselves for a rioter. I mean, I'm not quite yeah. sure if I'll just like, run to a door or kick up a bit of a fuss, maybe speak tersely at a few employees, but there'll, there'll be something. You can, you can bet mm-hmm. your ass on that. Tim. Alright, uh, Tim, yeah. Um, well, I played Halo Wars, I mean, not Halo Wars, Halo 5 uh, Firefight. Uh, I enjoyed it. It's um, really good. Yeah, I liked it. Uh, I didn't find the problem with the rec packs that everyone's saying that you need rec packs to beat it. You don't. Um, I don't think that that's true. Um, play. I've been playing UFC extensively. I've been playing a couple of guys on Twitter. Black Magic, he beat me. Um, so I've been playing that and uh, really enjoy that game. And I'm um, still doing my Madden franchise uh, ever since uh, uh, Quantum Break, seven-hour boss fight. I uh, had about a week of uh, of regret of being a video gamer because it was really that. <laughs> it was it was it was one of those times where, where uh, as an older gamer, I think sometimes happens. You, I, I had to take a break, so uh, but I got back into it with um, Halo Firefight, and um, looking forward to. Uh, believe it or not, Uncharted. I guess that's the next big game. Um, that that's coming out, uh, but it's not that, besmirch Battleborn, which is out in about ten days. Yeah, I, I'm I, I'm not into that. I'm not into these betas anymore. Too, I, I am staying steer clear of the Gear Four Four beta. I mean, I'll do the Crackdown, but to me, I I, I kind of want to get back to just playing games in their in, in the release form and enjoying games and not reviewing. Yeah, you know, just basically not. Uh, the, the whole Gears 4 beta, uh, uh, being that it's basically an alpha, it really kind of turned me off, too. Um, you know, people are just, 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 just not, they're not thinking about the right stuff. They're not talking about the right stuff. Uh, the game, um, I'm sure when it releases, it's just going to uh, drop your jaw and, and, and you know, you're going to you're gonna love the experience. But for me, I'm just, like I said, I'm going to calm down on the betas. I know that we have a lot coming. Um 
but the Crackdown 3 I'll do because it's cloud compute. But overall, I'm kind of looking for that refined that experience. You know, experience as opposed yeah. to I, the division i mean i'm a level 25 but i was in the alpha and then i was in the beta and then when i got to the game i liked it and i still liked it but those those 10 hours in the beta and the alpha um in the end probably took away from 10 hours from the retail version if i had waited so i'd probably be a level 30 now and so, i mean i'm still trying to get to 30 and do dark zone Mm-hmm. Um, I know certain people yeah. are absolutely obsessed with this game. Mickey, uh, Darth Vader, those two are. It, it kind of sounds like it's self-destructing, though, mm-hmm. which I find. Oh yeah, I know. Just, like the amount of. I don't think it's hilarious. It sucks that that's happening. I mean, well, I, I mean, I say that as someone who's like level thirty and level thirty-eight Dark Zone. Yeah. I found it quite funny. Yeah, I'd like to see the game keep doing well, though. Oh, I, I do want it to do well, but. I just thought it was funny. The DLCs yeah. and everything are going to help push that game even further. I wouldn't worry about it. I think so. Anything. And uh, Dustin, what you been playing? Okay, so I'm just going to go through real quick. Minecraft kept bla- breaking blocks, put about 40 hours into it. If anybody mm-hmm. wants to play, just Bazooka XP, look me up on Xbox Live. We're playing it all the time. You're ready we- and willing. We are ready and willing. Just It's all survival, normal. Like Just come and jump in. Uh, we are going to go towards end game content. Uh, we have plenty of food, supplies, all that crap. You know, you, everything's ready. Like, there's nothing that you would... Re- like, other than being there and helping out, there's nothing you really have to, like, oh, these chumps don't know what they're doing. I have to teach them. No, it's just a, it's a game. And if you don't know a lot about Minecraft, jump in anyway. We're, we're cool with te- teaching people how to play. We just don't want people to feel like it's, we don't know how to play, then they're going to have to do everything like it's already mm-hmm. set up so it's a great world to come jump in and play with us uh other than that i've been i just started i let you know today ver i did it i did it i finally did it we've been talking about it forever and i think you guys did whatever I, I i just i did it today i was just sitting there looking at it and i keep not saying what this is but i deleted my saved game data to sunset overdrive and we're starting over it's going to be a great mission to sit there and play as a female character to, to hear because I hear that her voiceover is the best voiceover. So I'm playing as a chick, and she's pretty awesome so far. And I totally miss uh, the second job, air dash. The, the air dash, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it, you notice it immediately because you go to do something, you're like, oh, I'm falling short. Like it's like, oh, come on, I can't wait to get air dash. But uh-huh. uh, yeah, it's the humor's great. Like I. <sighs> I just I can't wait to really dig back into the game and do it. Um, <sighs> and for those who uh, have amazing. Xbox Live Gold, make sure to pick up Sunset Overdrive for free. It is free right now for yes games with gold. Um, my, oh. Give me a list of all your names so that I can permanently mark you on the list as why you didn't buy it. Yeah. <laughs> well, my older brother is not a big gamer, but he he's now. I, I texted That's... him today. I was like, "Did you download the game?" And he was like, hell yeah, I did. And I was like, fucking ass. It gets people that, like him, people that, that wouldn't buy excuse. those games. It gets, no, anything, it gets people anything, like him. Anything, he didn't games. even have an Xbox One when it came it, out. So yeah. That's not, yeah, that's just, not a consideration. If anything, Dustin, you failed us. Well, no, I would have failed him, not you. No, you failed us. We're the ones that don't get the sequel. You failed all of us. You well, we might still, he, who he's, knows? He, he's another the realm of possibility. With them putting in his game with gold, they might be pushing a ton of those units out. So when they make the Sunset Overdrive 2 announcement at this E3, that a bunch Everyone's of people excited. are familiar with the game, and they're going, that's that game I just played with Game of Gold that was amazing. And then, you know what, we get a sequel. So you should be thanking my brother for downloading it with everybody else for I Games agree. with Gold, Steve. I think you, Steve, yes. because you got so many subscriptions, should get another wait, wait, wait. Xbox Live subscription and download it there, too. <laughs> Chaos Dash made a comment. Did you buy all the DLC? I bought all the DLC. I recommend everyone buy the DLC because I bought it is the season's good DLC. Pass. So I bought the I bought, originally bought the game on the American store because I got it three days early, but then made sure that I bought the season's pass on the UK store because they would get more money for that. I'm, yeah. just, I'm just I'm just saying it doesn't seem to have gone down very well. Well, anything okay, else uh, you want to talk about, Dustin, or? Uh, Prophecy asked, is there bacon in Minecraft? No, but there are pork chops. 
Phil, Phil is cooking the bacon. He is eating the bacon, but we have no more uh, comments on the bacon. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Steve. Okay. Well, well I'm going to talk about what I've been playing. Um, yes. Like, I, I played Gears Four. I like it. Not much more to say. Uh, I played, you know, uh, Halo Warzone Firefight, which is awesome. I think Steve's ridiculous for not playing it because he. Oh, it's Warzone. I can't be bothered. It is no, really good, that's, and that's you should definitely no play it. It no is awesome. And when it comes out, you better play it with us because the Fuzzy Doom Brigade needs that, needs troops. That, that is not what I said. Look, you said Steve. it's Warzone. I can't be bothered. That was your exact I, I'm, words. I'm Steve, sure I just want to let you know, Steve, you're a Badger, and you got to work for Bear Cub and Sky. Bear Cub and Sky. <laughs> He's not com. a Badger. He no, be a, I, I said to be you a bear. I was going to play it, but then the Gears Beta came out, and I just no, you were too it. busy playing Halo Wars Two and Rocket League, ignoring ignoring your friends who wanted to play Halo Wars on Firefight. Hold That's on, besides how, the point. How was I ignoring my friends if my friends were playing? Because Halo. I wanted you to play it with us, with Marie and I. We were like, "Hey, Steve, come play with us," and you're like, "No, I got to play Halo Wars 2. I appreciate. Sure. Halo Wars Burn, one. I'm, I'm just telling you to check out. Oh yeah, that's right. Halo Wars one. Oh. Yeah. Well, check out Twitch ch- Twitch it's video. Be, it's, it's not out in like May. Bear Cup and Sky people. That's right. Oh yeah. Carbonation. But uh, but anyway, let's let's continue. Uh, the two main games I really played this in the last week. I uh, I finally finished Halo Reach. Oh my god, I finally finished it. I've been working on this game for years over time, like playing a mission here, a mission there. I finally said, you know what? I'm going to finish the last quarter of this game and be done with it. Last quarter of the game was really good. It was the rest of the game that sucked. But you know, the last bit of the game was pretty good. But uh, overall, I, I definitely would say it is the worst Halo campaign. Of all of them, by far, it's not worse than Halo 2's. It is. It is. It is. It is. It's got a terrible story. I don't care about the characters at Wait, all. As opposed Halo to Halo 2, 2 which has Halo, War, like, ha- Halo 2 has a bad story too, but it is better than Halo. Halo Reach. 5 has no story, so. And I hated the guns in Reach. They were terrible. All of them were terrible. I didn't like the abilities. Just, oh no, Halo Reach was bad. Well, no, it wasn't bad. I'd give it in, in the 80s kind of meta score. <laughs> yeah. but I, I can't say it's bad, but it's not in the 90s. It's bad. It's really great. I tend to, like, you know, there's a lot of space here that, you know, below that. If I mean, if it's as bad as you're saying, surely it should be in, like, the 60s. I, no, no, I can't put it there because when you compare it to... Uh, it's more about when you compare it to other Halo games. Uh, as a game on standing on its own, I think it's it's a solid, like, 8 out of 10. But when you compare it to other Halo, Halo games, it's just not as good. It's not as good. And on a 5-point so, scale, you can you can equate these to, like, being all around the same Give it score. a 4. Yeah. Give it around See, a four. look at that. You see? So, now you're so going to agree you, with them, Steve. That's what you mark it as less than the 84 that Halo 5 got Metacritic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. What do you mean, absolutely? There's like four points there. Yeah, I think it's a lot worse than Halo 4. All right. The yeah. problem with Halo 4 is it got boring after like two months of multiplayer because it was just ripping off COD. Yeah. It wasn't the I mechanics. No, but honestly, it wasn't the mechanics. It wasn't anything in particular. It was that it was just it, it because well, they tried to rip off. Problem. Yeah, they, they tried to rip off loadouts. It would just turn into, wow, this isn't the arena shooter that I love, and that's why Halo Five struck so hard because it. it but went I was back talking about being, campaign. I just think Reach is just not as good. Oh no, but if we're talking about review now. scores, that's why. Yeah, yeah. If is, you include yeah. the multiplayer, yeah, yeah, yeah. But anyway, uh, besides that, I played Oxen Free. I finally got around to playing Oxen Free, which I don't know if you guys had heard of. It's from some X. Uh, yes, I played. It. I didn't X like Telltale Develop. You didn't? Did you finish it? I li- I just don't like the fact that it, there's um, the design don't spoil of the it. game. I'm not gonna spoil okay. it. I don't okay. like the design of the game. Did you finish it though? No, halfway through. Oh, okay. You know, you gotta finish it to really get the full experience. This is a very very smart game. Um, I th- I think the story. It's okay. Was... I, no, the, no, it's. I it like the smart. story, but I felt you didn't. No, but you gotta finish the story to understand the story. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And I don't want to spoil anything about no, it because. I know. Because and I don't want to really, spoil certain things. Don't want to spoil this it. game. But, yeah, but you don't uh, really, you you won't have that much to spoil, honestly. Like you really, you really get the the spoiler stuff is at the end, honestly. Like it's well, really near at the end. Avoiding that, my problem with the game yeah. was just the design and the uh, uh, lack of things that you could do um, without. Like I said, I don't want to 
uh, you know, disparage the game, but I just felt yeah. like it's very simplistic. There wasn't. There it should is have been, simplistic. Maybe it a is little simplistic. more. I mean, play. it's simplistic in the same way that a Telltale game is. Honestly, you know, you walk around, Correct. you interact yes. with things, you make decisions. The decisions you make do kind of affect things, but they all come into one basic ending. But no, it's a it's a really smart game with the way it handles the themes and. I guess the basic idea of what happens in the game. I, I, I can't get into it. I don't. I don't want to because I don't. I don't want to spoil it. But if it's, <coughs> is it worth fifteen bucks? I don't know. Maybe um, it was for me. Um, but if it's on sale sometime soon, I would definitely pick it up. If you're a fan of story-driven games, the voice acting is good. The art style is awesome. The music's incredible. Um, a solid game. I really like. it. I think Dustin would like it a lot. What game? And it, uh, Oxen Free. Okay. Oxen free. It's 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 definitely worth playing. So if you're interested in story driven games, you know, for fifteen bucks, yeah, it's worth it. I give it a shot. Cool. And that's from yeah, Night School Studio. And that's that's uh, it was a couple of Telltale guys I think created their own studio, and it's the first game they came out with. And at this timed exclusive for Xbox, I think it's probably coming to PS4 at a later date, but I don't think it is right now. So yeah, pick it up. It's worth playing enjoy it so yeah uh, so that's all we've been playing um and that's that's the show so write us at letters at xbox uh we love reading your letters and also uh follow us on twitter uh i'm at team vernia steve is at steve rules dustin is at dusdg and tim is at p n f l y f e no Project four Result- live I'm trying to get also. I'm trying to get my um, P, P, oh, PNF oh, pro, pro, no PN four L Y F PNF four life. But I'm trying to actually um, PNF four. Uh, what is the F for? Is it Project just Natal for life? For life? For life. No, it's Project Natal four. The number like or just the F O R for L Y F E for life. I always say for life to people like. Just something that I've done okay. A spell it out. Spell out your oh, God. <laughs> no, we, we don't. <laughs> Unless, uh, guys, it's been a pleasure. <laughs> I guess I guess that settles no, that. I'm, I'm joking. Carry on, carry on. No, I got you. Got to spell this out. You said it's at PNF for life. PNF for life. So um, it's Pro- Project Natal forever for life. <laughs> no, it's PNF for life. L Y F E. Project Natal fan for but life. The funny Project Natal fan. Okay, yes, I was wondering what the yes, F stood for. Yes, that was I'm the problem. sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what? Uh, it's funny is, is that I'm trying to get, um, trying to inquire about uh, Tim Dog. Just getting Tim Dog for my Xbox Live. Instead, I'm thinking about retiring the Project Natal fan. You should. Well, now, be easy on it's getting Twitter. a little older. It's getting a little old. It'd be but, easy for uh, Twitter, though. Just swap that out real quick. Yeah. Yeah, so. but Twitter's all about the brand. Exactly. You know, can you... I'm worried about that. I, I, I know that Steve's... I have to get permission from Steve uh, for any kind of uh, Twitter changes. I think yeah. you'd have to consider whether or not it's worth doing it after you reached your creative peak. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's... I'm, I'm actually hitting the creative... The the downward cycle of the creative peak is um, coming. Well, no, it's that's all you, you got to do. Is... Well, you hit forty and then it starts going down. Well, so Tim, this is your peak. Exactly you're you're, right you're now, just going down the hill. I am gonna plateau very soon, and then Tim, I'm this start... is all you got to do, though. All you got to do is you get a tweet out to all your friends. Hey, I'm about to change it to at Tim Dog. Let everyone know. Retweet. You know, get the word out. We'll all do it for you, and then you make the change. And honestly, right. most people. Feel... Well, no, just to throw it out there, honestly, most people just see Tim Dog anyway because they yeah. don't yeah. highlight your actual name on Twitter. Yeah, and they'll just I write be like, at Tim, Tim Dog and it automatically swaps it. Yeah, so I don't even yeah. it's not even going to be a big issue. I'm yeah. trying to consolidate it. I am in the process of trying to consolidate this PNF deal um, just to Tim Dog. All right. It, it'll be a process. But anyway, but. follow us all on Twitter, write us letters, xboxuncut.com, and thank you for listening. We're out. We're out, people. (laughs) I'm gonna get Steve do this whole thing.